It's not going to be a great cold opening. <laughs> trust me when I say. So, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's uh, about time we address something rather serious. I don't want to. A lot of people have reached out to us about this. Um, you know, there's allegations. Uh-huh. Uh, there's accusations even, I would say. Yeah. And I-, I feel as though it's our, our civic duty to address this. And the answer is yes, for all of you asking. We have been keeping Akira Toriyama alive. And it was our break that killed him. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't know. All right. Our life force is too regenerative. Uh, he was our biggest fan. Why are you admitting this? I, Why are you admitting this? Because I, people have been asking, Danny. You told me mm-hmm. you were going to do the cold open. We both fought for the cold open today. Yeah. And you were like, no, I'm going to do it. Mine's going to be sick. Mm-hmm. And you admit to us having to be involved in the death. Of, my cold open Listen, was going to be, I'm sorry to announce Akira Toriyama has died and I had nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my cold Too open. Bad, you friend. bastard. Uh, because uh, I, I, for all of you who have watched our show for the last uh, year and a half, yeah. uh, w- he was alive <laughs> while we were running our show, <laughs> dies when we we're away. So for those of you who have been keeping up for the last year and a half, we might have had something we to do might with have it. Had something to do <laughs> if with you watch enough of our Video. Listen, I'd like to think uh, somehow one of our podcasts came in front of Akira Toyama and then he was like, Nan, Nandeo, what, what is I don't fucking, I don't fucking speak English. <laughs> but little did he know yeah. we were keeping him alive, ladies and gentlemen. But the, rest in peace to Akira Toriyama. The second Akira Toriyama died, I went straight to Google News and typed in Hayao Miyazaki. And I was like, <laughs> if this guy's dead too, we are fucked. We are absolutely fucked. Listen, we've got nothing but good words for Hayo, but maybe, like, take... <laughs> you, just, what, you want him dead. W- listen, we're back now. That's all that matters, all right? If Hayo's still alive, that means he could he could take yeah. more than four weeks he's off. Hanging, he's hanging on by a thread. It's like Final Destination. He was stronger. Akira was first. Yep. And then death was coming for Hayo. And but we're we, yeah, but we had a baby. Yeah. We avoided the truck scene. Yeah, exactly. Um, But... Yeah, it is a bummer. Despite the jokes and despite my initial reaction genuinely being, this will kind of be funny for the podcast. Mm-hmm. I did like the day Akira Toriyama passed, which was like f- like four or five days ago or something. Yeah. I don't remember the specific date. I like people always talk about like, oh, there's like when Robin Williams died, there was like a thickness in the air, like mm-hmm. a looming sadness. And I'd never felt that until this. Yeah. Where I just felt the anime community, like, kind of grieving over it. Yeah. And part of it is because, like, every fucking person had to be like, this is how Akira Toriyama touched me and this and that. And it's like, make you know, say something happy about him. Don't say how sad you are. But, like... It was it was very like interesting because we've talked about how like we don't love the direction Dragon Ball has gone in. Yeah. But regardless, I felt the absence of like Akira, and I was like, oh man, this. Well, is, that's like, the tough. thing. It's like I didn't want to like come in here and be like us, Akira Toriyama's <laughs> biggest fans, when we're like his editors are the only reason Dragon Ball is <laughs> yeah, even like, remotely good. But like obviously, that's like being like, oh Shakespeare, like don't love his works can't deny his claim over yeah, like right. literature history. You know, it's like <laughs> I think when Shakespeare died, there was some like written pot. <laughs> there was a guy like who only had 140 characters. Cause it was before Twitter made the change. And he was yeah. like, you know what? Wasn't even that good. Low deep, <laughs> yes. like rest in piss bozo. Just, and then just like, <laughs> nailed it to a door. And he's like, it's going to do numbers. Just some crier outside who goes from here. ye, here ye to well, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, fucking, yeah, like, fucking dead. Saw it come and get shit <laughs> yeah. on nerd. Died on his birthday. Yeah. What a loser. Yeah. But no, like, like, um, is that true? Will Shakespeare died on his birthday? Yep. Bomber is death day. Yep. <laughs> um, but no, like, yeah, I agree. Like I wasn't, I didn't want to like go on camera, like bawling, being like, I, I'm the biggest Dragon Ball That's fan. That's me. I'm the, when, like yeah. the biggest Dragon Ball fan has been like, this guy fucking sucks <laughs> yeah, nuts. Yeah, when, yeah. <laughs> the biggest Dragon Ball fan <laughs> has outed me for not being one. Yeah. But, um, no, but his, like his art style they, like, most mangaka have, like, their unique art style, but I'd say, like, other than Oda, none really as iconic as yeah. Akira's. Like, even when he worked on other things, like Chrono Trigger, he made all the art for. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, there was, like, Dr. Slump, Aureli, stuff like that. Um, like, you know instantly that it's him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really cool art style. I always loved 
the way he draws spiky haired people. I, like, yeah, and like his like obviously his presence felt ever because there's like so many people that like so many different shows and all that. I remember Billy and Mandy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Billy and Mandy did a thing, and then uh, kid name or code name kids next door did a thing. Yeah. It was like his influence is kind of it's like the Akira bike slide. Like the yeah, big yeah. spiky hair is just like it's literally yeah, it felt like, everywhere. So like I can like sit here and be like objective about the fact that I don't like Super and that GT was dumb right. and that like and like I like like Dragon Ball Z, but the pacing was a nightmare, which is why they had to make Kai. But like at the end of the day. It was the it was what opened the floodgates to the Western world of anime. Yeah, for and sure. like so you can like be like, oh, Dragon Ball is not as good as X, Y, and Z, and it's like, yeah, but like without Dragon Ball, we wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah, like, it's, it's also like, like it doesn't need to be good anymore. Like the dude's just doing a victory lap. Yeah, at that point, like if you made Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, you, like. He didn't even have to make shit anymore. No. Like, dude, just one anime mm-hmm. and then just decided for the kindness of his heart to make super, mm-hmm. you know? And he was like, yeah, I'm just going to like wade back into the waters. That is the cesspool of anime fandom. <laughs> and everyone was like, I don't like this. And he's yeah. like, I'm 70. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't care. <laughs> I genuinely don't give a shit. I'm interested to see what happens with super. Like, yeah. like obviously to, to move to segue beyond like us, the glazing session on Akira yeah. Toriyama. Um, rest in peace, obviously, an incredible. Mangaka, his presence will be felt forever in the anime world. <laughs> I hope when you give my eulogy, because I will die first. Oh, it's for not sure. a, it's not a <laughs> yada yada yada. <laughs> like uh, he said a couple of cringe things. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that has I just been got hotel back to Europe. Was weird and uh, fucking yada yada yada. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, um, shitty haircut, right? <laughs> pretty gay haircut. <laughs> if, if, we're being, if we're being real here, <laughs> yeah. No, we're gonna get straight. We're gonna get straight to the discourse over your uh, death. Uh-huh. Uh, so we're gonna get to the Danny as a gay haircut thing in a second. Uh, but yeah. Wait a second, that's an original thought you just had. Yeah, that's you me, baby. Yeah, yeah. Danny, Danny. Danny sucks dicks a lot over there. <laughs> um, so, but I was. I'm curious about what they're gonna do with Super because Super's kind of been in like a, a relative hiatus, and it's probably because yeah. Akira Toyama hasn't been doing great that's for a couple of true. years. True, I didn't even consider that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like it's like he hasn't been publicly seen in, until like since like 2019 or something. Yeah. Um. So it's probably just like not crushing it health wise. And there's a lot of people who have been doing fan made projects of Dragon Ball Super, and it's been really good. Yeah. And I wonder if like those are gonna work their way into being canonized, or if they're just gonna be like somebody else is gonna pick up the story, if it's gonna live in hiatus land forever. Because like usually it's like oh the sun picks it up or yeah. like the the key illustrator, but I don't really know if there is that for. Dragon Ball. Yeah. Um, well, I know the manga is past where the anime stopped. Mm-hmm. So they'll at least adapt through that. I yeah. think they're just waiting for the manga to get like substantially ahead. Yeah. Um, they'll probably just give it to Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah, He'll exactly. probably just do nobody, Dragon Ball because nobody loves like just like screaming muscular <laughs> yeah. men than Hayao. Hayao Miyazaki's like, you know what? <laughs> It's a woman lead now, and also <laughs> pastels, and uh, it's no longer about fighting in space. It's an yeah. exploratory journey to for, like try and find your childhood yeah. and lost adulthood. And now it's goopy. Yeah, yeah. oh, it's <laughs> the goopiest. Yeah. And also, let's get Edward pa- Edward Pattinson over here. Yeah, exactly. Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. You got it. I don't know. You didn't actors. have it, but you had it. I you found know? it. Yeah. Edward Pattinson works. Boy, it's close did enough. you? Edward Cullen is why you're calling him that. Yeah. Fucking, you're right. Yeah, you can I, I just don't know. I know anime things. That's yeah, all of it's up <laughs> you here. You know, anime things in Twilight, kind of, I guess. I, I haven't seen a singular one. Really? I also haven't seen Dune 2 yet. Oh, that's right. Well, you've been gone. I've heard it's very yeah. good. Dorothy is like, hey, let's go see Dune 2. I heard it was good. I was like, you didn't watch Dune 1. She was like, I thought it was boring. And I was like, if you haven't. Yeah. If you haven't seen Dune 1, Dune 2 is just going to be a fucking name soup. <laughs> yeah, really? It's just going to be name soup. He's like, oh, there's a guy named Paul. Uh, yeah. They're on a, a, a desert town and Elvis is here. It's funny because it tricks you into thinking it won't be name soup because it's like it stars Paul and his mom, Jessica. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I can wrap my head around these. Yep. And it's like. Paul, you need to ride the Shai Halud yeah. because you're the Lisa Al Gaib. And it's like Jesus Arrakis Christ. Yeah, with all the, yeah, of all the spice. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it is exceptionally good. I've heard it's so. really fucking cool. Um, the I call my dog Shai Halud mm-hmm. because. <laughs> because you have to walk abnormally to get around her. Yeah, because, yeah, if the, she sees you, she's going to mob walk. you. Well, she the Shai Halud is the giant sandworm yes. on Arrakis. And she does what we call squirmy wormies in the morning. She's a big, she's a big squirmy wormy. Yeah, she does like an army crawl. Mm-hmm. And I go, Shai Halud! Shai Halud, <laughs> it's so nice to see you. <laughs> 
then she just gets up on like all fours and she's like, may your knife chip and shatter. (laughs) Yeah, Like, all right, chill out, Elvis. Yeah, relax, relax. Uh, But no, so back to to Dragon Ball. I don't even know how we got the fucking dude. Um, Crazy that he's gone. Uh, I don't really actually have anything left to That's say. Okay, RIP Bozo. What do you mean back to Dragon no Ball? <laughs> you ju- we were the reason it wasn't a tangent. It was a transition from Dragon Ball. Fucking rip Bozo. Uh, um, get clipped. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know. Toriyama sure got three sixty no scope by that brain contusion <laughs> for sure. For that from that hemodomal whatever. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah, toxic would... drift really came in and fucking he got phase clan just so to see hard. Like a happen. 2013 phase clan edit. <laughs> it's just like it's just a gear Toriyama's four photos getting clips. It's just like oh. <laughs> we joke because we love him, ladies we, and yeah, gentlemen. We laugh because otherwise we'd cry. Yeah, so now that's... will you finally admit because he's dead and you have to? Uh-huh. Um that Gogeta and Vegeta are, are different very people. different people. I refuse to do it. I refuse. Because, listen, I, if I can't say it to his face, I'm not saying it to his ghost, all <laughs> right? What are you right? talking about? I'm say not, it to my face, you coward. I'm, I simply <laughs> won't do it. All right? I, listen, I know he's up there watching, still not uh, understanding what's going on in this podcast. Yes, sure. Because I like to think that in heaven, we're still split up by language. <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, hovering over us, and, like, God is behind him. He's like, why am I here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, what am I doing here? Let me see my family. <laughs> I'm grandparents, please. Oda's saying some really nice things about me. Bring me to him. That was literally, yeah, because oh, yo, <laughs> like, Oda dies too. It's just like, you're coming with me. God. Uh, well, speaking of which, this is also, will probably get us in trouble. Nice. I have actual, real, oh, like, do a, we have a death pool? I have oh. a, de- a death pool. I thought you were going to be like, That'd next, be next month, I'm going to go. That'd be so hype and tasteless. It's got to be Togashi. I'm sorry. It's got to be Hayo. No, oh, fuck. That no. dude is on a steady diet of cigarettes. And, and ramen. And, yeah. and, like, working. But, like, he, yeah. loves, he, he loves work too much. He yeah. can't leave. As long as there's a forest being deed, mm. he's he'll be alive. As long as, like, a tree's being cut down yeah, somewhere. Exactly. There's a story being written about he's it. He's the goddamn Lorax. As Absolutely. long as there's a forest yep. to defend. Um, but I have actual quotes from mangakas, like, talking about Akira Toriyama's passing. Gotcha. So, Ichiro Oda, uh, I hope that the paradise is as pleasant as your as you imagined it in your manga, sensei. Very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Masashi Kishimoto, I've just learned of my sensei's death, and I'm over, and I'm, it's overcome, but this person doesn't know how to spell, mm-hmm. and I'm overcome by a feeling of emptiness even worse than when Dragon Ball ended. Uh, I have... I'd hope so. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hope they'd be Low sad. bar. I have uh, Yuki Tabata, the Black Clover mangaka. Yeah. Who? <laughs> what? <laughs> just, Akira Toriyama? <laughs> Did he make Naruto? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like an old head to me. <laughs> I'm like, cooking boomer. <laughs> oh, yeah, just like, fuck. Oh, oh, Dragon Ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we go ask my grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> I came up with transformations. <laughs> Spiky air, more like. Fucking, who cares? Fucking, who cares? <laughs> Oh, Christ. More like Akira Snoriyama. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. That's great. The black that's black great. Black. That's I can't. I know you wrote that down before. There's no way that was top of the head. Oh, fuck. All right. Um, anyway. So Ninja Kamui. <laughs> um, wow. So a lot happened while we were away. <laughs> Very clearly. <laughs> Me and Danny miss each other a lot, guys. We're home. I'm so- Daddy's home. Yeah. Our first day back, our last day back. <laughs> listen, listen, no one's gonna. We like got this. used to the freedom of not podcasting, and boy, no. oh boy, was it nice! All right. Um, I specifically texted you last night to not watch Ninja Kamo, yeah. and you watched all of it. I, I watched it on the plane back. Oh, it was I much, gotcha. You were much too late. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, How was it? It looks cool. The dub, not great. No, the dub is 
probably the worst dub I've seen in years. Wow. Uh, so what is Ninja bad. Kamui? So Ninja Kamui is a story. It's like the most classic revenge story of mm -hmm. all time. Um, it's a story about a guy who's like, I fell in love with a female ninja and you're not supposed to have emotions. So we left because we were in love. And then the ninja clan was like, not cool. Can't do that. And they all have cloaking technology that changes their face. So it's they like move. just Hell's Paradise, isn't it? Ah. So he falls in love with like the Shogun's daughter. And then he's like, I'm not about this. And then he, the Shogun tries to kill him. The main guy. Yep. Yeah. That's the same thing, right? More or less. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah almost exactly. They yeah. don't get sent to an island though. Right. It's like a whole thing where it's like, he is like running from the ninja community. The ninja community is being run by essentially Amazon. Ninja community. Yeah, yeah, like it's a bunch of Redditors. There's like, like, well, there's like 400,000 of them. Apparently right. they know, like they're no longer in Japan anymore. Uh, and then it's like, Amazon is also evil. Uh, which is, I love that. I love a good, what, like what a the twist. corporations are the bad guy <laughs> yeah. twist. Uh, and he like his entire family gets murdered. Uh, so he's like getting revenge against like the ninja clan essentially mm. and like that's the entire plot of the show is just like revenge and every episode there is three four-ish minute fights yeah. because the story itself could not be less original it is <laughs> right. it is literally like stank did a really good job of explaining it where like the the like the dialogue is just like them kind of entering a room and being like there's dead people here and then it's like good job we said it you know it's like right. literally just like it's um you ever had like audio like assist for like watching yeah, a movie yeah. or something like, like if you're on a plane and it accidentally turns it on it's like you hit this button it's yeah. that it's literally just like cc like it's it's closed captions Damn. for everything going on the dub though i accidentally so i started the first two episodes when i was in france i was like we're all hung over sitting on a couch i was like i need to watch this for work throw on two episodes everyone's like because it's it's easy to understand it's like spoon fed to you and it's just right. a bunch of fights it's john wick with ninjas right which is just john wick four right um, right right and like so they're like wow you're convincing us is this what all anime is and i was like usually they're actually better than <laughs> yeah. this uh but the fight <laughs> that's are, a good baseline then if they're already into it the fights are fucking nuts yeah. the fights are really cool wow. like if you if you want like uh if you want like the coco melon of anime where it's <laughs> right. just like it's yeah. Dragon Ball, basically, yeah. where you just sit there and you just don't think about anything and yeah. you just watch like people like get cut in half. You're just like, yeah, it's basically Dragon Ball with ninjas. So Naruto without the world building. <laughs> right. Um, and it's fine. The Japanese, I don't know why I wasn't watching in Japanese. Like I was watching it in English. So like everybody who was watching it with me wouldn't be like, ew, I don't know these words. Right. But the fucking main voice actor, Higon. It's Kento Nanami. It's like the most, it's the, it's like, oh, crazy. Hey. It's like the yeah. deepest voice known yeah, yeah, man yeah. to like, I don't, I don't know his actual name, but like he, it's so it's like in English, unbearable. Japanese, right. pretty good. That's sick. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I still do want to check it out. Cause honestly, the way you described it is how I already watched Jujutsu Kaisen. Yes. Where I'm like, I'm just here for the fight. Yeah. Give me a good fight. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and if it's, Nanami's in it, then fucking. It's JJK without any of the need to explain itself. Right. It is literally just like, they're just doing hand signs and like growing arms and like blowing out smoke out of their mouths. Whoa. And they're not like, they do that. They're yeah. just like, like, they're not like, here's how that happens. They're just like, <laughs> yeah, it's not like, oh, he's from the fire clan. They're just like, oh shit. Yeah, it's literally, <laughs> they're not like, and he's able to do this because he's able yeah. to mold his chakra in six different ways. The yeah. yin and the yin. It's literally just a guy does hand signs. Then he's got six arms. And they're like, that's his secret art. And they're like, cool. I <laughs> Fuck like, yeah. I like the concept of like, in like in a JJK fight, if uh, whatever the dude with the blood magic, what's his Chozo? Chozo. Yeah, like Chozo shows up and he starts doing blood magic, and instead of Gojo being like, "Oh, he's from this clan and that's a secret technique and he mm. does it by compressing this," like Gojo's just like, "Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> ew, ew, ew!" He's like, oh, "Say your fucking blood, Yuji, run! <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this is, <laughs> Yuji, Yuji. I literally just got over yeah. gonorrhea. Please help." <laughs> or, or they do explain everything, and there is just one guy where Yuji's like, what is it, Gojo Sensei? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> right, fucking bugs, bugs in his skin. Yeah. Why? Jeez. Everybody check your skin <laughs> for dicks. I like, I, it's like the whole thing about Naruto. Like, to put one person in there and just like have him like run, just have like a guy named Fred who's just like, it's like Shino Aparame comes out and fucking beetles start coming yeah. out of his skin. He's like, oh, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Fred somehow three days in, they're like, all right, tuning exams go. 
It's like, no. That's why I want, I'd love a Pokemon season where Gara is in it. Yeah. He's the only other anime character in it. And you know what? We talked about this before. It never occurred to me. Gara's a ground type. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So he works yeah. in the Pokemon universe. Absolutely. As long as there's no water types around. Yeah, exactly. Or what's ground week two? Yeah, water. water. Nice. And other things, fucking I'm sure. Still got yeah, you got it. And steel, I think. He, he could fucking box the shit out of Pikachu, though. Like, Ash would be boned. Yeah, just like imagine just like Ash being like, go, Pikachu, Thunderbolt. And Gar's just like sand <laughs> bear. <laughs> getting <laughs> blood shooting out. Like, <laughs> is, is he fainted? Just raining <laughs> Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> It's just the yeah, ash just being like, I don't, I don't think the Pokeball's can piecing them together. <laughs> it's just the ball, the ball just aiming in all directions. It's just like, <laughs> please. <laughs> just, oh, it's just fuck. like, go Pikachu, just sand funneling into his throat. <laughs> woo! Pika, woo! <laughs> Pikachu's just standing there. It's like, I don't know what to do. I'm not being told. <laughs> Pikachu, move! <laughs> Dodge! Oh, fuck. I used to hate him Pokemon when Ash goes dodge mm. and Pikachu does it. Mm. Say that every goddamn time. <laughs> yeah. like, every time Pikachu gets punched, just like, hey man, yeah. uh, say the words here. <laughs> you know, is it that? Is it that Pikachu's like, like an attack is coming? Pikachu's like, Ash, <laughs> come on, give me something to do, <laughs> please. Or is Ash in between battles like grabbing Pikachu? He's like, hey. You're your own guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. I can, I'm coaching you here, but if you see a fucking meteor coming yeah. at you... Uh, when, they, when they're pumping up a hydro cannon, yeah. you have a whole turn to think about it. Make a goddamn executive decision here, yeah, Pikachu. Like one, one left swipe here. Yeah. You'll be all right. We're uh, funny this week. We are. We're, we're great. This is, this is six weeks. This is six weeks of us waiting here. Um, I... We should probably talk about solo leveling because that's like our whole thing. Speaking of dubs. Okay. Solo leveling. Getting lots of love on the dub. Has a good dub. Very good dub. Really good dub. Also has a good sub though. Oh yeah. But I mean like it's hard. Very, very rarely mm -hmm. do I notice a bad sub because mm -hmm. I just don't know the language. Because you just don't speak Japanese. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but I watched, I was like way the fuck behind on solo leveling because mm -hmm. I just haven't been keeping up. Yeah. So I was watching it like two nights ago and I was like, oh, like three out of the five episodes I have to watch are in dub. I'll Might just as well do watch that. Them. Yeah. yeah, I'll just do that. It's like, have you watched any of it? Yeah. Oh, in dub? in dub. I've seen the TikTok like edits. It's like it's like Blue Lock. I've seen his how how yeah. How. Like I've seen that one. Yeah. He's crazy. It's He's a crazy, good. and it's funny too because the episode I started on dub is like the transition from him being a little bitch mm. to that. Yeah, it's like, like episode five or something. Yeah, 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 like the last episode I watched in sub, he was this dinky little like, oh, I hope I get enough gold I hope coins. I can run the 10 kilometers. And <laughs> yeah. then it's like, he's like, he runs like one 10 kilometer race and he's like, oh, I'm six five now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he goes from like Tails the Fox to Sonic the Hedgehog like, or for Shadow the Hedgehog instantly. Mm -hmm. um, Which means he gets guns. <laughs> he gets guns yeah. essentially. Like, but uh, yeah, the dub's great. I was really upset that like it's two weeks behind because now mm. I'm back on sub. But I mean, the sub's not bad. It's cool. Yeah. It's just like dub is easier. And if it's good, then, then I'd you like want to watch, watch that. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am very surprised. I'm not, I guess I'm not that surprised by it because it's like the biggest anime of the season. So you would hope that like the English dub would be good. But I think this does like bring us towards like a kind of like a conversational point where it's like, is English dubbing of at least the biggest projects getting to a point where like it's almost indiscernibly quality wise from subs? Because it's the same thing kind of happening with JJK where like there's there's like some voices I kind of hate in JJK's yeah. dub. I don't like Yuji's voice, yeah. but like everyone loves Gojo's voice. Yeah. Like Gojo's voice is like it makes people absolutely feral. Everybody loves Sukuna's voice because Sukuna is yeah. voiced by. I forget who, but it's like a really famous voice actor. He does like basically sounds like Bowser. He sounds yeah. like he's like sounds fantastic. Yeah. And so it's like there's kind of this discourse going on now that's more prevalent than ever, where it's like sub is very clearly not getting worse, but dub is getting better. Right. Yeah. And it's happening with the biggest, like the biggest like stages. Cause like even like Demon Slayer. Yeah. Has an incredible dub. Does it? Yeah. I Never watched it. I know people love Anosuke. I yes. don't know how uh, the yeah, others Because it's Bryce Pappenbrook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. they love him. They, I mean, it's like he's just Kirito, you know? I The only experience I have with the dub, which is not a fair one, is from playing the game. And okay. I remember just being like, man, if I watched this in dub, I would not have cried during M Mugen Really? Train. Yeah. 
Why? I don't know. The Tanjiro's sub voice actor is just so good, but it's also, I don't know. There's Fair. A, there's a part. Here's the thing, though, with sub. I think I'm more likely to experience the emotions because I don't know what they're saying. Mm-hmm. So I just get the emotion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when Tanjiro's crying, I'm reading the line, so I know what he's saying. But like, in terms of what I'm audibly hearing, it's just sadness. Yeah. Whereas, You're more focused on like the music, the aura, yeah. what's going on on screen. That yeah, kind of thing. rather yeah. than like how he's actually delivering lines. Mm-hmm. So interesting. Yeah, but like I think like on the biggest stages, yeah. like and that's the thing is like and this is harken back to Akira Toriyama. I've only ever watched Dragon Ball yeah. in dub. Yeah, and I think that was like that was truly the beginning of like dub like as like the biggest projects being dubbed with mm-hmm. like the best voice actors we had to offer yeah. because Goku's sub voice pisses me off. Yeah, he's oh, me like too. This yeah, six five monster of man, and he's like, "Come in!" And I'm like, I, why, "Why is that his voice?" And I like, I get that it's like the like the system of the times because in the early '90s, like the male leads always had to have high pitched voice, so it was like that, and it was like um, even like Yu Yu Hakusho. Actually, no, not even Yu Yu Hakusho in Japanese. It's pretty good. No, I think, I think it's to capture his like childlike wonder maybe. or whatever. Because honestly, he has a high. American voice. Not really. Sean Schimmel is not a deep voiced man. You know what I mean? I guess, but like he's, it's better than like, it, it's a literal it's woman. Better. It's a literal woman it's, who voices him in Japanese. Yeah, it's for sure better. It's not like Luffy, who is yeah. also a literal woman in English. But it, for me, know? it fits better on Luffy than it does. Cause like Luffy yeah. is he's scrawny, he's yeah. small, you know? And like Goku's this mountain right. of a man. That's his entire character is that he's a mountain of a man. Yeah. And it's like, Luffy is like a quirky, silly, funny, like stretchy boy. Right, but- that's that's what's weird to me about Goku is he is a father of two. Yeah. And like a grown ass man. And I guess technically 50 years old because Gohan's like 20. 25. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gohan's like a grown man too. Mm-hmm. So Goku's like 50. Mm-hmm. But they write him like he's Luffy. Yeah. You know, because he does the big fucking, I eat a big. I do the, 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 the comically large mutton stick. Yeah, he does a mutton stick. He's like, I've never kissed a woman mm-hmm. at age 50. You have two children. Yeah, he's like as silly and goofy as Luffy. Um, but, and so they give him a Luffy esque voice in Japanese. But he's a grown ass man. He's yeah. a he's a grandfather. Yeah, look, he's look, a literal look, grandfather. He is too. an yeah. actual grandfather. He is like so pan. Yeah, and just no, pan, right? yeah, just pan. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, he's like in his fifties, and it's just like for me that separation is like I don't know. I, I just I need the, the dubbing mm-hmm. way more. And so I like, agree. there's times where I'm like the dub is better. And so yeah. like with Soul Leveling, I was like watching it this morning. I was like, do I switch to dub? Then I was like, I feel like I've seen all the good dub moments on TikTok already. Because everyone's yeah. already, everyone's freaking out about it. It's like, I haven't seen them on TikTok. I don't know. Um, but oh, my like, TikTok is like 30% anime edits. I know. My problem is I've shifted away. Like, my algorithm is just like gaming and musical comedy now. Gotcha. I, for work. Musical I, comedy. Good old musical comedy, Mr. baby. Bo Burnham edits. Do you know Kyle Gordon? No. He's like blown up. He does the like, uh, like uh, DJ Crazy Times. Oh, I love him. Him, yeah. Yeah, okay, never mind. He has like a whole album out now. Yeah. But, uh. I love musical comedy, but anyway, mm-hmm. for work purposes, I got to shift back over to anime. Cause I'm just like, I keep almost making TikToks. It's like, why is no one talking about this? And, and everyone's you're like, like, Oh, I it's just, the biggest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, everyone's like, we definitely are. You're just too <laughs> focused on Kyle Gordon's Irish fight song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, my TikTok feed is literally just anime edits. Um, schizophrenic sponsored posts, and which I send to you, and yeah, you never, you, you never respond to ever. <laughs> we talk, you know, yeah, we, talk we did, we did. We, there was the one thing, Aeon, Aeon time, Aeon magic. The what two, that? the, it's like the blonde woman and like her like masked, her like masked like drummer, and it's just her like lusting after yeah, him. And it's yeah. terrible <laughs> music. Fantastic watches. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like. It's pretty much actually just that anime edits. Like the occasional update on Ukraine, and then like, and like, <laughs> and then like, just schizophrenic sponsor posts that are usually just horrible music. Yeah, like people just paying like twenty dollars to sponsor their music to get it out, and it's just me sending it to friends, being like, "This is the worst fucking thing I've ever heard." But they're like, "Wow, look how many saves this has." Yeah, yeah, I feel that. We used to send each other ant game ads too. Oh yeah. I miss that. As low as it gets. As low as content could possibly get, we'll <laughs> set it together. I yeah. fucking live for it. Um, um, I do want to talk about soul leveling, though, yeah, outside sure. of the dove. Can I open this goddamn window? Get a little hot? Yeah, so hot. Uh, but I do want to talk about it. Uh, they're going crazy in soul leveling with the added context. 
Yeah. There is so much added context, but there's also things they're skipping, which is weird. Interesting. So like, I, they're adding so much context in the manhwa that the that the that the manhwa doesn't have, and yeah. it's all about the S ranks, which I find interesting because the S ranks don't really play a role in the story for like what's ostensibly going to be at least season two. Right. Like I, I we're on episode what nine now, yeah. and we're literally we literally just got to the the Tang Day Sick, or I think his name was like Tang Day Sick or something, the B ranked assassin, right? right the yeah, guy yeah. who like gives him st- yeah, with the guy who gives him stealth essentially, and that happens in like I. Th- think book three mm. maybe book two we're not like we're not like ripping through the story and I, like i'm not like oh this needs to be going faster like the pacing isn't good or anything like that but we're adding so much content like we're like we're um cutting away to like uh hey chain we're cutting away to the guild master we're cutting away to the president of yeah. the hunter or to the hunters association all these like different people that we're checking in with that we just do not get check-ins with in the manhwa and i have to ask the question like pacing wise do you think that the show's heading at a good pace? Because I have an opinion about it, and I just I'm curious about what yours is. I think it is moving at a good pace, and I don't every time it cuts away, I'm assuming from what we've talked about before that those are new additions. Yeah. Like every time it's not with what's his name? Sun Woo? Everything every time it's not with yeah, Sun Woo. Yeah. Every time it's not with him, I've just been assuming that that's like added material. Kind of, yeah. And I think it works to just like make the world feel like a world more lived in. Yeah. Yeah. If it was just, Not just like a singular POV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If we just followed him, the world would feel so small. Cause like every other expansive world anime does it like my hero. You're always checking in with professors and yeah. like Naruto is the same anime. So like yeah, the same yeah. deal, but like is the same anime as what MHA is my hero. Yeah. Because I was about to be like... Love to hear you unpack that. Well, because my hero, you're always checking in with professors. And I was going to be like, and Naruto, you're always checking in with professors. professors. Yeah, yeah, okay, like, it's fair, yeah. You're but, checking with Kakashi and Obito and fucking everybody else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but so, yeah, it makes the world feel like more lived in. It feels bigger. I think it's paced well. It's paced... The only issues with pacing mm-hmm. are issues I have with every single video game anime I've seen. Where it's just a lot of like stopping it's a lot of like explaining the system explaining video game terms or he gets beat up and then he uses a goddamn full restore yeah and then it's like oh cool so the last five minutes were just like for nothing filler yeah yeah, yeah you're just like because like the thing is he gets a full restore every single time he does a daily mission so he's got like at any given point dozens just yeah. like loaded up yeah, yeah so it's just like anytime he gets like fatigued runs out of mana runs out of health he can just be like Full recovery. (laughs) And like in the early parts of it, in the early parts of the story, not really, because he hasn't had the system for that long, but he's in the hospital for like five days. So he's got like five full recoveries just like stacked like in his back pocket. So at any given point when he's battling against like Cerberus or anything like that, like he's like not really all that up against it. Right, yeah. Which I, do you want to talk about your deal with the pacing before I transition? my, My general question was just like, because there is so much, like like I said, we're checking in with Che Han, like Che Han, yeah. Che Han. I'm so bad at Korean names. Like just all these. You S- can rank- honestly just say sounds, and I just nod and mm-hmm. smile because yeah. I don't remember the, the names. Blonde lady, yeah. Like- and then there's like the ex firefighter, like uh, with the red hair, the S mm-hmm. rank, and then there's the old guy who's the who's the leader of the Hunt yeah. Association. Most of the times that we're checking in with any of them are not in like the manhwa. Anytime yeah. we've also anytime that uh, Geju Island, Jegu Jegu Island is talked about, also not in the manhwa. At least for like a long time. Like the idea of Jegu Island is like loosely introduced in like the first couple of books, and then it's not fully fleshed out until much much later in the story. So like anytime that we're, and it's very curious to me because like yes, there it does play like a deeper role later in the story, but it's curious to me that we're trying to build it up so early yeah and it's like almost like they're trying to do like a like a like an oda thing where they're like oh look how early these like these seeds were planted right, right. and it's like okay but i know it's coming like i know and like we're building towards the same plot line here yeah. but at the same time like i don't know like i feel as though it takes a little bit of the intensity out of like the the dungeons yeah. out of like the portals because usually in the manhwa the second that uh sung woo goes into a portal you are singularly focused You're on him stuck in for the, the entire thing yeah interesting and so it's like it, there's like a sense of urgency like he's battling against goblins he's battling against like the 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 steel fanged lichens yeah. and, like you're with him and then it's like I'm afraid that when we get into like the later stages here, when like the actual like circumstances get much higher and it's like, oh, we're fighting for like the entire world now and all these kinds of things. If we take a step away, it's going to be like, all right, 
I didn't need to check in yeah. over here. Like, I didn't, I don't, I'm not curious about what the S ranks are doing over here. Yeah. You know, it's like a Boulder's Gate like companion with a little exclamation mark over their head. Like, yeah. fucking eat my shoes later, Gale. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> which magic do you need from me, you fucking nerd? Yeah. Um. So like, that's my thing. Is like, I don't mind right now. Where I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, it, stakes are low. The stakes are low. Like, he's battling against Tang Day Sick or whatever his name is. Um. And, like, that's fine. Like, you know he's going to win. And, like, I mean, that's this entire thing. You always know he's going to win. He's always going to get stronger. He's going to level up. It's solo leveling. Right. But for the moment, I'm just, like, apprehensive about what this means for the future. And I'm like, maybe when we get to the things that we're building up towards, it's going to stop. And we're just going to adapt to the manhwa. Yeah. Because at a certain point, the S ranks do become more involved in the story. It's just we're not at that part yet. I do see your, like, beef with, like, I get why it could be cool. Like he's trapped in the dungeon. So we should be too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's cool that he can't escape. And so we also can't check in with other people in the manhwa. Yeah. So that's a cool theme, I think. But like, I also like, I like them planting seeds. Cause like I said before, it makes me feel like whoever's adapting this, like gives a shit about solo leveling where they're like, all right, how can we make the story feel more impactful to people who haven't read the manhwa yeah. where it's like when these seeds pay off, it's like, Oh shit. Like this is the dude from episode one. And now he's this big, whatever thing like fair yeah. rather than it's just like popping up as if he's like making it up on the spot. Cause it really is in the manhwa. It's just like a solo shot on Sun Wu the entire time. Right. And then it's like things pop up along his journey. And then right. it's like, Oh yeah, this is the guy who yeah. you like, we loosely mentioned three books ago. You know, right. it's like, I feel like it'd be cool. Like, or like the issue that could arise with that is that it feels like it's just like, all right, Sun Wong does this and then, and then, and then, and then he does this where it's like, it feels like the writer has nothing planned and is just like making it up chapter by chapter. Kind of. Yeah. Whereas if it's all set up before, then it's like, it does feel like this established world with people living in it. And then they just start to connect. They've done a much better job, like illustrating what the guilds are. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they talked about the Reaper guild and the Knights guild and the, it's like the white tiger guild and all these other guilds. And it's like, usually that only, we only ever get that perspective through his friend, like the rich, like, uh, Chable friend. Yeah. Um, and so like, we don't usually get that perspective unless it's like him talking about how he's going to become a guild master or until much later in the story when the guild masters actually become central to the story. Yeah. So it's like, yes, it is making the world feel much more lived in. I'm just like apprehensive for like it kind of being like one piece at a certain point where it's like, Oh, Luffy's fighting against Do Flamingo. I wonder what fucking Sanji's up to. Right, and you're like, right. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> We've been on this for three episodes, but like, there's not as much to adapt as one piece, obviously. And the story's already fucking over. So I don't think we're ever going to run into pacing issues. I'm just, I guess just like apprehensive about that possibly happening down yeah. the line. No, for sure. I feel that. Uh, outside of that, uh, I was going to say, um, I don't remember, so you haven't read this, but I don't think in the manhwa he gets his fucking shit tossed by Cerberus that hard. Really? I, like, I vaguely remember, I like vaguely remember, and it's been a while since I've read the manhwa, like, I, and by a while, I mean like three or so months. Um, I think I remember him like opening the key and then it's like Cerberus fight time and then it's like you cut to him, like he like defeats Cerberus and he's got like one HP left and he was like, that sucked. Right, yeah. right. But then it, like, I do remember him taking the potion, like the the snake poison. So like, I just don't think the fight was that long. I think yeah. they kind of like maharaga it where they yeah. were like, Cerberus is going to fucking throw mitts here. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it with the dog episode and the snake episode where it's like, this show is taking fights that could and should be like nothing quick ass fights and executing them in the coolest possible way. Yeah. Like I remember the dog fight was like needlessly sick yeah. when it happened. Um, I mean, yeah, I can't really, I don't know what it was like in the manhwa, but the Cerberus fight was dope. How are you feeling about the animation? Good. Really pretty good. It's, like, okay. It's really good, right? Yeah. I think I've been ruined. By JJK. I think I've been, fu- I'm watching it and I'm like, it's not really hidden. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck. Cause like, it was just, it was so, and it, it's so funny. Cause I was openly critical about it when I was watching JJK where I was like, oh, there's, there's no detail. There's uh-huh. no, like everything feels so scrambled. It feels yeah. so hectic. And now I'm watching this and I'm like, 
There's too much fucking detail. I'm like, <laughs> fucking, I want, I want to see somebody turn into lines. Yeah, like, you know, I'm like, I can, like, I can still tell that Sung Woo. Yeah, where the fuck are the cubes? Where are like, the cubes? Yeah. I want to see Maharaga, like, bend as he gets thrown <laughs> yeah. through a fucking building. Turn into a little doughboy. Yeah. yeah, I think I fucking, I can tell what's going on. Yeah, I think... Part of it is that the fights are kind of nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, he, again, they're well executed, yes. but he's fighting dogs, fighting a big, like, snake. He's fighting an assassin, like, fucking throwaway character that yeah. you know isn't going to be anything. And so it's not like... Like, JJK was very well animated, but also it's like gods fighting gods. Yeah. So it's like... And also it was season two, so we like knew all the characters. People were dying. There were more stakes. Yeah. Whereas this is like literally, if it was a video game, he hasn't even gotten to like a real boss yet. No, he like, really hasn't. They're all mini bosses. Like the, I'd say the realest boss he's gotten to is Cerberus, or yeah. I think his name. I'm gonna call him Taysik. Um, and the Taysik fight w was really good. I thought like in the beginning they were kind of doing the thing where like they two their two bodies like stand there, mm. and then there's a bunch of like slashes yeah. that you just see. And I was like, I literally wrote down, I was like. Ooh, animation was a little lazy in the beginning. And literally as I'm ty like typing that, the animation just took a crazy step up. Yeah, yeah. And it was like him, like, uh, Tasek activates stealth. And it was like yeah. him deflecting things. And I was like, that looked really good. Yeah. And I was like really enjoying it. But I'm just sitting there and I'm like, fucking JJK, man. Yeah, yeah. Fucking JJK just ruined me. I think it looks pretty fucking great. My, like, big main note and what I suggest, or what I suggested for this title, the mm -hmm. episode to be titled is... Solo leveling is finally good. Yeah. Because episode seven, which we haven't talked about yet, when he fucking becomes unhinged and kills all those guys, yeah. gets his first kills, really fucking cool. It was sick. When he like, there's a dude like up in his face and he's like, what are you going to do about it? And he just like, the knife is under the guy's chin and everyone's like, How, how'd you do that? When did and he then pull just that takes blade? his head out. Yeah, yeah. It's like one down really cool and great in dub like that's another one where he's just like growling i have a line what was it when he the dub actor is doing such a fucking like american psycho impression because oh, yeah. when he gets but so is the sub the sub is also like a low growl yeah it's yeah, also yeah. like he's like one no like it's like he's yeah. like he's literally just whispering but like yeah. menacingly well when he gets he unlocks a new skill and he goes I just unlocked murderous intent. Cuts my enemy's abilities by 50% for a minute. My God. It even has a 30 second cooldown timer. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see Tong Day 6 ability. Yeah, yeah. Like, but it's like, it was so cool. And the thing about solo leveling, because it was running into these issues that I have with other video game anime where it's like, oh, you know, he gets his Achilles tendon cut and he's all fucked up, but oh, for a story, mm. pops a rare candy or whatever. Absolutely. And I'm like, fuck this. This is dumb. Like, I hate that shit because it just makes the fight meaningless. Yeah. Um, the way this is getting around it and the reason I'm finally on board with solo leveling fully is because it's almost like, it's almost like One Punch Man where the fights aren't the point. The point is that he's losing his humanity. Yeah. And I really like that. Yeah. I love that, like, when he does the full restore and cuts that dude's abilities in half, mm -hmm. it gets really scary. Mm -hmm. He gets, like, like, it does, like, the negative vision, and he's all fucked up about it, and the music's going crazy, and he's, like, toying with him and fucking him up. I like, and I like when he uses his skill. He's like, there's another emotion gone. Yeah. So, and he's like, I don't even need to be angry to kill you scumbags anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the, like, that's the way so leveling gets around the, like, fact that he's, like, an OP Mary Sue kind of-ish mm -hmm. deal is that, like, it's taking away his humanity. And I hope they continue to do that. And I hope it's, like, an anti- redemption arc where he just gets worse and worse as a person kind of i mean it's definitely like losing his humanity is definitely a, a theme that runs throughout all of soul leveling i don't know if it's about him getting worse as a person but it's definitely about him like adapting either beyond or without humanity yeah so like that will definitely be something that you continually see that's cool that's like similar to jjk for me where it's like I like that we are now seeing this trend and blue lock is like this a little where mm -hmm. we're seeing a trend of like happy go lucky headstrong protagonist 
getting fucking disillusioned into oblivion, yeah. you know? Like, Blue Lock's like that, where it's like, everyone comes in with, like, a high Q attitude and quickly learns that that's not gonna One win dude, just like, Lock. everyone's like, oh, this is the miracle child. Then he gets yeah. smoked in the fucking face. Yeah, yeah, someone just kicks him in the head. Yeah, he's and like, there's like, that's not soccer. And you're like, like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I need steak tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you want to hear what they did, Skip? Well, they skip. They, so, you know the convicts that, like, the, the assassin kills? Mm -hmm. There's, like, three of them, right? Um, he doesn't actually kill all of them. Mm. The, there's one, the one with long hair, he doesn't kill. And so he like cuts his throat so he can't talk. Is this, uh, this is a spoiler? Uh, no, I, mean, I think they skipped it. Or is it gonna pop up? They're already, in, they're already out of the dungeon. I guess so. Oh, then yeah, the yeah, dude's yeah. just swallowed by the dungeon. I we, guess. Well, so that's the thing. So in the, in the, the manhwa, manhwa. It's like, oh, he gets his throat slit and he can't talk. Yeah. So, um, and I think they did this to, like, preserve Jin Woo's, like, character a little bit because it's a dark fucking moment. <laughs> but Jin Woo, like, picks this guy up and is like, you're coming into the boss room with me. And he's like, go see if you can beat the bosses. And it's a hobgoblin, an entire fucking room of goblins. And they just stab this dude to death. Wow. They just, like, fuck this guy up. They, like, mangle him because he's, like, a rapist, right? Yeah. So it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, Sung Woo, like, being, like, oh, like, he, like, you can see. <laughs> oh, he uses, don't rape. <laughs> oh, you know, you don't put your pee-pee where you're not supposed <laughs> yeah. to. Very hard stance from Korea. Wow. Good job, guys. If that was Berserk, the goblins would have, like, oh, raped the <laughs> Oh, they would have, they, they would have been airtight. Yeah. All three holes, baby. Yeah. They would have, like, he would have been spit roasted. <laughs> uh, but so he gets thrown in there and, like, the goblins, like, kill him and then, like, Sung Woo's, like, cool. Now I can go in there. And then he kills all the goblins after they've murdered the shit out of this guy. That is crazy. Yeah, and they skipped that. Yeah. And I don't, I, know, I don't I know why. wish they had that. Because that's I, on track with my, like, oh, he's becoming a crazy person. And, like, maybe, ah, fucking, I don't think, but they're out of, they're out of the, like, um, the dungeon already. Yeah. And it's already shut down. And I don't think they explain that, like, they don't explain that retroactively. No. So I think they just, like, actively skipped it. Yeah, it's just gone. I mean, yeah, look, now that I know what it is. There's no way that dude's, like, coming back. Yeah. Like, yeah, they did skip it, it seems like. But why would they do that? I guess just because it's pretty fucking dark. It's dark. I guess. But, like, him decapitating people that are trying to kill him isn't dark. Like, he just, That's like. It's not as dark. Him throwing, a good, like, a convicted rapist who's lowering his sentence into a room of hobgoblins is not the darkest thing that happens in this series. People are more cool with. I mean, some people. Some people don't care. Like, I wouldn't care. But, like, people are more cool with killing in self-defense than killing a bad person who's defenseless. Um, but no, people, and Seraph is confirming right now, mm -hmm. or Seraph agrees, okay. that people are more cool with like killing in self-defense, even if it's a stomp. Because really, if you think about it, if you're OP, if you're not going to die, is it really self-defense? Nope. He could have just taken all their swords away. Yep. Um, but people are more cool with killing in self-defense than like having the bad guy with no weapons and be like, what are you going to do, pussy? And then like sliding the th the knife into his neck. You yeah. know what I mean? So. Oh, well, he, he doesn't cut his neck. But I'm saying like, but he feeds him the goblins. He, uh, yeah, but he doesn't <laughs> cut his neck. I'm saying it's like there's so many scenes in movies where like the protagonist will beat the villain into an inch of his life. But then when it's time to kill the villain, they'll be like, you're not worth it. And it's like, that's what the cool guys do. That's a fucking, yeah. that's my hero. Yeah. And no. I fucking hate that. I hate it as well. I get, I got into like such heat when watching Full Metal Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a scene where, and don't come at me again. I get it. I've heard all the arguments. Gotcha. But there's a scene where Envy is this gross little goop. Thing. Yeah. He's this gross little slug and Mustang's like, let me at him. And he's yeah. about to kill him. And everyone's like, no, Mustang, you, you can't do it. We gotta, you know, you gotta be the good guy. And he's like, what? Wait, he, <laughs> he turned into Mace Hughes' <laughs> wife yeah. and stabbed him. And Mustang's like, please, I just want to kill him. And everyone else, I guess the beef is that they're like, Mustang can't kill him. Like, they're like, We'll kill him. He'll die. Oh, trust me. But yeah, you yeah. can't do it because you'll, you know, you'll become. You'll lose your humanity. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking give Mustang, Mustang take Hawkeye's gun from yeah, her yeah. fucking life. <laughs> just, just like, he's like, all right, I'm cool. I'm yeah. cool. <laughs> I know, I'm, like, I'm so, everyone was mad at me because I'm sitting there like to an audience that can't respond being like, Fuck it, Mustang, kill everyone in this room. Yeah. Like, they're being annoying. Yeah, and you're like, take every witness down with you. That's my whole thing with Batman. He's like, oh, if I kill, I'll go to the dark side. It's like, hey, man, 
Uh, fucking Joker deserves it. Like, yeah. like, can we just, can we expedite this process here? Everyone Joker kills, Batman has technically killed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, blood fully on his hands. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, you probably kill less people if you start killing some Or, people. use all your money, make a goddamn prison that won't let him out. Or, you know, just <laughs> like, like some infrastructure changes, <laughs> yeah. like some social, like some social projects. Yeah. You know, let's just pump a little money into the city that we're defending with our fucking bare fist. At least send him to like a Siberian prison or something. Like, make Joker the snail, the Terminator snail. You know what I mean? The Terminator snail. You know, the snail that's like, what would you do if there was a snail? Have you not heard this? That's following that's you. That's following what you. What does that have to do with Terminator? It'll kill you eventually. What is that? What? It's a Terminator. Why Terminator? It's a Terminator. It can't be killed. It's the deadly snail. Just, I just don't know why you would. Oh. What? Thank you, Mrs. Mufflehood. Waffle blood. Mrs. Wolf. Mrs. Wolf's blood for the God, fuck. God, yeah, your I eyes are... It's far that's, away. That's what happens when you wear fake glasses every day. Uh, this does on, off, doesn't do anything. These are just pieces of plastic. They're for I blue know. light, Danny. You know that. Know. Thank you for the fight. That's very nice. Thank you. Anyways. Yeah. Back to money. Money. <laughs> Back to stocks. I had someone reach out and we'll, like, they, they're fans of the podcast. Okay. But it was mildly funny to me, and I should respond rather than just talking about them on the podcast. No, fucking shit on these losers. They emailed me, and they were like, hey, I run a financial podcast, and I'd love to have you on in some capacity. I'm probably not going to do that just because I have nothing to say about stocks. Oh, I just, <laughs> but the I mean, idea like, that's so funny to me. I would love to go on a podcast where I just like pretend I know what I'm talking about. Just like, oh yeah, man, Apple, big going up. I, I got the Apple. They're done. Uh, they're done. Pull out of Apple. Uh, Tim Cook is cooked, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Sell your Apple stock. I'm telling you right now, CVS is where you. Want your money. Listen, you know how long their receipts are? That's because they got that paper train, baby. Yeah, exactly. You can go on. They love the podcast. I don't. I should reply to that email. I don't want. I don't. I just. Uh, I just do the smoke. We, we just, My financial plan is uh, hold. <laughs> Yeah. Hold much. Yeah. Um. I. How dare you take my analogy? I. Listen, I tell everyone I'm Smaug. I'll, and I'll be fucking Frodo Baggins. Yeah. And I'll steal your gold. <laughs> you will. Yeah. What was the last time I paid you for this podcast? I, actually, I was thinking it's about been a that. While, actually, I was like, I should text Nick, but he's on vacation. No You're one the wants- one. Listen, we we established this. Yeah. You reach out to me. You tell me, Nick, I need this amount of money. I do the boopity boop. And you say boop. eventually. And then no, I never say eventually. <laughs> don't you don't you paint me as this man holding on to your money against your will you text me a number i send you a number you know what the best part is what i could weave that web i could i could weave that yarn of be like nick i ask you every month and you don't pay me and who you think they'll believe nick me who you think they'll believe me. no they won't why do you think i'm in charge of the finances as we're in your throne of expensive anime statues which means as you i wear don't your, need your cut of the fucking podcast <laughs> money danny as you wear your thousand dollar sweater vest this was a very well was it cheap but it's not I thousand Dollars. Mm-hmm. I probably spent thirty thousand dollars on this trip. <laughs> You're wearing a New Balance. Oh, hold on. I didn't buy this no this way. trip. This is from last. This is from last trip. Oh, on the trip. I thought you said on this trip. No, and no, I was no, like, no, 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 no. What are you wearing? You're wearing sweatpants and a sweater vest. I feel like I could get together a thirty thousand dollar outfit, actually. But Dorothy could. Oh, for every sure. time I walk in, you got Dior bags everywhere. Actually, I don't know if I could. I don't, I don't know if I could find 30 grand in clothing anywhere. That seems like too much for clothes. How many watches do I get to wear? <laughs> Two. Two? Max. Fuck. That's, you know what though? Like 20 grand in watches I've heard of. I could put like, the, here's the thing. Any, any outfit that I'm putting together is like an absorbent amount of money is like yeah. 18K in jewelry. What's the most expensive outfit you could put on from your closet? From my closet? Yeah. I have a $3,000. But a reasonable amount of jewelry. You I can't just, just stack up to the elbow I and just, I just bought a $5,000 jacket in Paris. Uh, I have, okay, all right, let me, let me walk you through it, all right? I have a, a $7,000 watch. Hey, anyone, anyone struggling financially right now, you now have Nick's hometown. You're the one who's asking me, all right? <laughs> Joking. I'm making a joke about how I doxed you accidentally. Yeah, 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 anyway. you're right. Yeah. Come on through. Come on down, good old Nick's. Uh, Dorothy bought me a Breitling watch. That was yep. 7000 I bought myself a Bulgari ring. That was $5,000. I have a car. Uh, I have a, I have a, a $1,500 ring. 
Um, I think those are all like my actually expensive rings. A couple, I have like three, four, Your $400 finger is rings. now worth like three grand if you count the medical expense. It's going to oh, take absolutely. to take yeah, it off. Listen, if somebody wants to listen, if you want to come chop these fingers, come wild. No, uh, the black one. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you mm-hmm. count the medical bill, that's going to need. That's going to grow out. It's fine. Yeah. It's a whole thing. I bought an Alexander McQueen jacket in Paris. That was five grand. I have a Jeez. Gucci t-shirt that was a thousand. Like mm-hmm. wearing that feasibly. A most expensive pants. I have like, Oh, I have Gucci pants. Uh, of course. This is $1,000. Right. Most expensive shoes. Yeah. I have Louis Vuitton loafers. <laughs> loafers. That, those are $1,000. I don't have expensive socks. But the loafers. You can, you but can the find loafer, some... I wouldn't wear socks with loafers anyway. It's not a fucking scrub. You don't have any, like, polo bear socks? What, what the fuck is a polo bear sock? Oh, wow. That hurts my feelings. What do you, what, the what most is, expensive article of clothing I own is, is from fucking is, polo. Is a little, is, it's is a from... beanie that Sarah got me with a polo bear on it. It's like $80. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know that one. <laughs> yeah. That's adorable. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. I can put together, I'd say 20K. I can put together a 20K. God, that's crazy. I like nice things. I know. It just sucks. I posted, it doesn't suck, but I posted that outfit. I posted a thirst trap yeah, on Instagram. Okay. Thank God we're around to it. <laughs> I posted a thirst trap. Thirst gay. Trap. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> we'll get to why I'm gay. Um, it's the penises mostly <laughs> it's the dick in my ass yeah, right now yeah. um but uh i posted a thirst trap on instagram because i bought for the first time in my life i bought an outfit yeah rather than just like what do you mean what what do you mean i usually go to the store and i just buy a shirt like oh, i gotcha. buy a pant um but I, <laughs> one one leg yeah if I, I buy if, one leg at I a time buy a band, they say sir you gotta buy both and i go please i only have three schmeckles <laughs> I only have three seashells to my name. I heard you barter in seashells. Oh, oh. Nick threw up. Nick threw up. Oh. 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 You made me choke. But you didn't even do a spit take. You threw it up. Oh. That was Nick's. That was Nick's Nick, gargle take. Nick went what? <laughs> it came out. It came out like a oh. frog jumping out of your mouth. Oh, the idea. God. I just love the word schmeckles. <laughs> people wonder why we don't have more women on the oh, pod. As people loved the Stella episode. People all right? did love Stella. She was great. Oh um, God! <laughs> but I only have three. Please, I have three please schmeckles sir, dude, did you rip the pants in half? You have to pay yeah, for that. Yeah, you have to buy it regardless. I go, no. <laughs> Sarah, do you have schmeckles? Sarah, she's, my girlfriend's looking. Please. I'm just like shaking her purse. <laughs> please, Sarah. A bunch of dollars with my face printed yeah. on them are <laughs> yeah. fall out. Like, do you take Danny? <laughs> take gay dollars, please. <laughs> All right, here's why I'm gay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> take gay bucks. <laughs> take dickies. Oh, um, only valid on Fire Island. Oh. <sighs> I'm gay because. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> yeah, fucking clip the, it. That's, that's it. for the edit. Yep. I'm gay because I went. To, I made the mistake of being in the front row of a stand-up comedy show, so I put together this outfit. It connects. Yes. Put together this outfit. It, I look like a Backstreet Boy kind of. You do. It was full white. It's full white, mm-hmm. but it's like a beachy outfit. It was. It's nice. It was nice. It's nice. It's a what? It's an off-white shirt mm-hmm. with like a. Uh, it was all cotton on. But it was like a uh, nice, like I don't know, like crochet looking over shirt, mm-hmm. and then white pants. It was white family Christmas photo on a beach aesthetic, but yeah, it was a nice. I know you're gonna say all these white families taking white sweater photos on beaches aren't dressed nice. Mm. Please, we'll lose our entire Christian demographic right now. <laughs> I swear to God, we'll do it. Um, but it like it was what I thought was a nice outfit, and then I got a haircut that day, mm-hmm. and I was like, same I've, one he's got right now. Same one I got right now. Um, and I was like, I feel handsome. I'm gonna post this picture, and I felt good because all every people complimented me on mm-hmm. it, and I was like, nice. I want to go build more outfits at some point and post more feel good pictures mm-hmm. that night we go to stand up comedy and it's like a five mystery comics. You don't know who they are. It's like, that's the gimmick grab bag. Yeah. It's a grab bag. It's literally a mystery box. It's of Louis CK. <laughs> His pants are off. That's the real surprise. Yeah. It's every canceled comedian. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then hosted by John Mulaney. Yeah, it's like yeah. a balancer. Absolutely. But, um, the gimmick is you don't know who's coming, but, it could be an A-lister. Like, mm-hmm. Bo Burnham's done it before. Um, uh, Taylor Tomlinson has done it. 
She's sure. funny. Those are names I know. Yeah. Um, I don't know who that is. Oh, and I do know who blonde, that is. She's very cute, very yeah. funny. I should have mm. said funny before cute, but uh, that's just sexism, baby. Yeah, that's right, baby. That's, yeah. that's listen, hey, you're a gay man. So you're, you're, you're free Here's and clear. why I'm gay. Mm-hmm. So I made the mistake of sitting in the front row because I was like, I love stand up comedy, Sarah. This will be fun. And the comic, one of them was like, you know, Gen Z, it's so great. What's great about Gen Z is that, like, they're all gay, you know, all of them. Like, you, sir, uh, what year were you born? Born to a guy. And the guy was like, you know, whatever. And he's like, Gen Z? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, gay? And he's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, see, they're gay. And everyone cheers. And he's like, he's like, what about you? What, uh, millennial or Gen Z? And I was like, yeah, Gen Z. And he's like, gay? And I was like, not gay. And he's like, what? What do you mean not gay? And I was like sitting there and I'm like, please don't make fun of the outfit. Please. <laughs> please. I'm so excited about this outfit. And I'm like, and Sarah's like cracking up next to me. And uh, he was like, he was like, what year were you born? And I was like, 99. And he's like, 99. You're gay, little buddy. Come on. And then, and then he decides. At little buddy, I'm charging. I'm charging. I'm charging the fucking stage. He goes, come on. You're gay, little buddy. And he's like, with that haircut, you're telling me you're not gay? And then does three minutes of stand up attacking my haircut. Everyone's like, gay, gay, gay. <laughs> and then three Kiss the- a boy. Kiss <laughs> a boy. And Sarah's just like, kiss a boy. I like turn to Sarah and I'm like, you have to kiss me. And she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, we've never, I don't know this man. And then every time he would like, every time he referenced the bit he'd be like yeah you know like it's so great that like gen z is like out and proud except this guy yeah and I was just, i'm just like i just want it to look nice today <laughs> yeah, just, like just, there's nothing I wrong with being gay i'm just not yeah i just like i just the macy's catalog looked like me a little bit and i thought i was gonna be cute yeah so that's why nick is calling me gay <laughs> so funny because you know he was like he was standing through the crowd he knew that joke was coming up yeah. like five minutes before he's like all right gay yeah. Gay and young, gay and young, gay. And he was like, those are the people I'm going to point at. Yeah, he picked the one guy who looked like a background dancer and my shiny teeth and me. Like, (laughs) Yeah, and you were just like, you were number two on the list of gay and young. And you couldn't even get to his third option (laughs) because you were just, you were blinding him with your R. Kelly music video (laughs) dazzling. Well, it's not an R. Kelly music video. It'd be yellow. Yeah. Because the piss. Topical. Because the, uh, not really. Bad guy. That was like 12 years ago. (laughs) All right. Yes. Uh, that's fucking hilarious. Thanks. It's I uh, fantastic, and it's why I don't go to comedy shows. Yeah, it was fun though. I liked it. That guy was really. That's the worst part. Is he was really funny. Oh no. Yeah. You got Alpha. Because at least if he home. wasn't funny, I could at least be like, it's my job to be funnier than you, and mm-hmm. I do it. You should. You know what she'd have done? She'd be like, no, no. Everyone, everyone, on Instagram liked yeah, it. Yeah. I stand up, and I'm just like, I have three hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> this is my mom. She said I looked handsome. Yeah. Was, I have should've... ridden the shy halud. You should have shown him your thirst trap at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah <laughs> that that would have that fucking got yeah, him. Yeah, look at all these men that say I'm handsome. Yeah, there we go. The, yeah, the, um, yeah, that might have been pitching our, our correct idea there. But yeah, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for coming out the other side of that. Thanks. You did fantastic. Cool. Should we talk about our flashback? Yeah. Like our news. Yeah. Do you want to talk our news? Sure. Do you want to go first? You, sure. Yeah. Um, Megan, uh, Megan the Horse uh, did a cosplay of Gojo. Did you see that? Who the fuck is Megan the Horse? Megan the Horse. She's a horse. The Stallion. <laughs> you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, she did a Gojo thing. She hosted the anime awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love Megan the Stallion mm-hmm. so much. I would. Let me tell you. What would you do? It's a it's an audio medium. I'm, <laughs> I would just do a little. Nick would be a cowboy. You, you know, you do it. Yeah, guys, you chat. You ever just doing a, a ride I'm cowboy. yeah because wow i'm not listening i'm willing to admit <laughs> i'm not enough though. man for megan the stallion for sure i listen i don't think i could hit it from behind genuinely for sure no i i like would never even like go up to her and be I, like hi i'm a fan what i'm saying is daddy i don't think i have enough penis no to, to hit it from to behind I, yeah, yeah I no for think, sure i have i have a there, listen there's a fair to average amount down there yeah. i don't think i have enough dude you know what like agreed same yeah you know what's funny? It's every time I've recently come around to being a giant Megan the Stallion fan. Yeah. I've never heard a single one of her songs. Oh, you near, you near Hiss? I didn't even know she makes she fucking music. fucking buried Nicki Minaj. Like, well, it was actually a long time ago. Her. She buried Nicki Minaj. What, what do you mean? Over. Like, just a better song? No, it was, it, was like, it, was like a, it was like a diss song. Whoa. Yeah, because Nicki Minaj is married to a sexual, uh, what, what is the word I'm looking for here? 
Is they gotta knock on people's doors and they're like, ah, the, the, the kids, I love them. Uh, not a pedophile. Pedophile. Not a pedophile. But like, sexual yeah. offender. I, but dude, there's another, is that it? Yeah, sexual sex offender? offender. Sex offender, there we go, yeah. Nicki Minaj. Is married to a sex offender, and so is her brother. Hold on, before I say this crazy statement, uh-huh. who am I thinking of? Cardi B, never mind. Cardi B. What about her? Is allegedly. Married a- to a sex offender? Rapist, I think. Cardi B. I think I shouldn't say any of this. I My have God. No idea. Cardi B, I believe she would like said stuff about how she used to be like a hooker, and she would like. I think I've heard this. And she'd like drug the men and rob them, and everyone's well, just that's like, "Not." And everyone's that's just, not rape. And I thought rape. That's then. larceny. Well, that's not larceny. That's absolutely larceny. Oh, maybe it is. I'm You're thinking of arson. arson. Hey. <laughs> and then she would light them on fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking of Miley Cyrus. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miley Cyrus commits arson. That's it. And now we've broken down every yeah. woman known to man. Anyway, next week I'll come in with the actual details yeah. of this. I'm not going to look it up now. But Good. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Just fucking Everyone pedal did. news. Pedal news <laughs> with no backing whatsoever. As long as I say I'm 30% sure. Yeah. You no, know, I'm pretty sure Cardi B like drugged and robbed men and she's like, like, that's what you got to do to survive, baby. Gotta hustle, baby. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Listen, I'll give that snaps. Hell yeah. Anyway, um, recently it came around on uh, Megan the Stallion. Yeah. Because I kept like my Instagram suggested wall is like all half naked women because all of the all creators. All the people we follow. Because yes. all the people we follow, which mm-hmm. it sucks. It's half naked women. Oh, those and, like, boobies. Oh, no. Whatever will I do. It sucks since I can't whip out Instagram in oh, public. And whip something else out. If you yeah, know what I, mean. I whip out my dick sooner than Me Instagram. Me and Dorothy have actually literally had this conversation yesterday. We uh, we, we have a friend that we follow. Um, or I'm not going to say names. Okay. Uh, but just like full tits. You out. still follow? Um, Is- yeah, oh, and we both gotcha. fall. She was she was scrolling Instagram, oh, her, so she went through the same thing that I go through, where I'm like, yeah, this is what happens when like you just associate mm-hmm. with a bunch of hot women who do content in L. A. Yeah. And it's like, wonder what the content's gonna be, yeah. and it's like titties. That's yeah. what it's gonna be. But I kept on the Instagram Discover page. I kept running across this like gorgeous, absolutely stunning woman. And I'd like be like, oh man, look at that, look at this like hot cosplayer who mm-hmm. is this and i'd be like oh is this someone like daniel follows or you like is that why they're being suggested and i click on i'm like oh it's fucking megan the stallion again <laughs> is she? i keep i keep getting here <laughs> and eventually like by the time the gojo one came out i'm like all right i'm in love with megan the stallion nice it's just you know i'll admit it would you have her on the show <laughs> oh chance would you would, no no i'm not saying i'm not saying oh could we if and megan, no. Stall- megan stallion's like yeah i want to come talk about anime would you you know what yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Because I'd here, be afraid. Here's the thing. If you're like, would I have Sydney Sweeney on the show? No, because she doesn't give a shit about anime. Well, obviously. That's, that's why that was like my The thing I, about Michaela, when we had Michaela on, the most nerve-wracking thing to me was not knowing if we'd have enough material because uh, she isn't that into anime. Yeah. But having like Stella on who was also a very gorgeous woman, was such a breeze. Yeah. And having, like... Well, because she's a degenerate. Well, but that's what I mean. Yeah. Megan the Stallion's in anime and shit. Oh, I know. But, like... I'm that scared. helps. I'm scared. You scared with <laughs> I'm scared. You scared? I, I, think, I think she's so attractive, I wouldn't yeah. even be scared. Danny, here's the thing. I find power sexy, and she's, like, the most powerful woman. I would just, I would just sit here and fucking stutter. I think I'd just be, like, there's no, there's no stakes. What, True. What's the best? No, the because- best case scenario is she remembers my name vaguely. She Fair. remembers that my name is D- D- like Danny Shada, mm-hmm. and that's the best case scenario. Yeah, yeah. You're you're model. You're modest Dada. <laughs> yeah, and nice to see you on the red carpet here. Because yeah. all even, of our friends got to go to the Oscars. I wouldn't be nervous. It'd be the same as like if we had like I don't know like what Ryan if you put us in one of our songs. On. What, what if, if she was? What, what if, if? What if we got hissed, Danny? What if she was like two white boys don't just know shit lazy. about anime, and we just get fucking? And it's way worse than getting flamed in a fucking <laughs> comedy. It's like a six minute diss track. Yeah, it's just like way longer than Nicki Minaj got. Everyone's like, who the fuck is she talking about? It'd be awful. We get fucking buried, Daniel. Dude, we're, we're just like you know what? The people who- fucking DM DM <laughs> Megan the Stallion. See if she wants to be on the show. She literally hosted the anime awards. And yeah. you know what? Danny did some research and we found some things out about anime awards. Uh-oh, and Crunchyroll, me and Danny found out we're actually the third biggest anime podcast. Yeah. Only under the fucking Crunchyroll apparently has a podcast. Yeah. Our, it goes Trash Taste, number one anime podcast, Crunchyroll podcast, us, 
Bluey's podcast. Which just <laughs> which leads me to believe we are not only the third biggest, we are the third. Like it's podcast. just like, like right, right. There's only three that anime just, podcasts. That, that fucking god damn it. <laughs> being like being like trash taste, crunchy roll, us is sick. Fucking awesome. Don't but look at the rest of the When you list. follow it up with a caveat that the fourth biggest category anime podcast is the fucking bluey podcast, yeah. it makes us look worse. Yeah. Can I look up how many people listen to the Bluey podcast? I, I'm is sure. that information available? I, I, if you like on like Spotify or like YouTube, I don't know. Also, what are, how, are they still coming out with Bluey? They yeah, still, they are. They're still doing Bluey. Oh, that's also my news. What? Let me see. Bluey. There are two characters in Bluey. Also, anytime I ever do news, everyone taking it at least at most eighty percent value the because I never have all the facts. Bluey is a cock. I'm not sure where Danny found this article. It's completely fake. But it is pretty funny, so we're going to keep it in. Someone in Bluey is a cuck. <clears throat> the parents in Bluey cuck canonically because... What do you... They, they here's both the cuck? news. I don't know. Whatever the term is. What, Someone's a cuck in I, that relationship. Okay, sure. Who's the cuck? If I'm... If you and Dorothy are hiring a third man, if me, you, and Dorothy are in a relationship, a okay. cucking relationship, you and Dorothy are I in the... I think you do a cucking. It's more of a... Hold on. Shut okay. up. Okay. You and Dorothy... Yes, Dad. Fuck. Okay. Confirmed or not? Uh, sometimes. Okay. Yeah, occasionally. <laughs> and you're in the relationship, and you're like, hey, I want Danny to come and end of sentence, honestly. Yeah. I want Danny to come. <laughs> it just seems backed up, yeah. I want Danny to come fuck Dorothy. Yeah. And I'll watch. That Are makes me the cuck. Only you're the cuck? I'm the cuck, yes. But Dorothy's into it. She's like, I want Danny to come and fuck me while you watch. That just makes Dorothy a woman having sex. That's not fair, I think. Why? Everyone should be shamed. But their name, dude, cucks are named after the bird. A cockatiel. A cockatrice. That, that's a cockatiel. Oh. Yeah, 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 that's a cock. Uh, oh. No, a cock, there's a cock. It's a, cock is short for like the name of a bird, but the bird lays its eggs in other birds' nests. Right. And then I think the, like, that bird hatches first and eats all the eggs and leaves. I think it's not fair. I don't think you should shame anyone for any kink unless it's peeing on minors. Cuck. Hashtag R. Kelly. I love that we're back on R. Kelly. Cuck it's is topical. It, cuck is not really a shameful. Like, being called a cuck is only bad because of the context of people calling people cucks online. That's what I'm saying, though. But if you're like, if you came That'd on, the, like me if you're you, a cuck, uh -huh. would you come on the podcast and we're chatting about it? Would you be comfortable to be like, yeah, I, I'm a cuck? I, no. But Probably. if you want to like BDSM, if I, if I you'd be like, yeah, it? I'm into getting tied up. If I was into like, but like the thing is where it's okay. You're so focused on a monogamous point of view where you're like, oh, like there's obviously negative connotations dictated to, oh, somebody else fucks my girlfriend or significant other or right. boyfriend or something like that. And like us being monogamous, being like, wow, you let somebody else fuck your blah, blah, blah. I, but like, go on. It's because we have a negative connotation towards the idea of Sari or, or Sarah, Sora Dorothy being banged out by somebody else. <laughs> Try one more I time do not know Sarah's name. name. I swear to God. All right. <laughs> Sari. Sucking Sari, Sari and Dorothy. Sorry. Yeah. Because uh, like we have the negative connotation of like uh, them getting fucked by somebody else and then let alone watching it happen. I'm fine with all of it. Like it's not me. I'm saying I think the connotation exists and I want to remove it. I don't think people should be shamed for being cucks. Is They're what not. I'm saying. I think they are. I mean, like, because it's a derogatory term. But only. But it's like how you. The reason you can't jokingly, except for this bit, because we had context. You like on other days, if we didn't have the context of me getting called gay by a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. you can't be like, "Yeah, Danny's gay. That was so gay of you." Mm -hmm. Because even though being gay, we don't believe is wrong. Uh -huh. There is like, well, speak for yourself. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Over here. Um, Big yeah, ones on Walmart my side. Pays me. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, the calling someone a term derogatorily implies that the real un underogatory version of that term is negative. Like uh -huh. if I'm like, you're gay. The joke is that you're not. And that it would be bad, bad if, you if I were. was. Yeah. So if I'm like, you're a cuck, which I have said in the past. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely have. Um, if I'm like, you're a cuck, the joke is that you're not. Mm -hmm. And that it would be bad if you were. Yeah. So, yes. is this, so, so is this us like uniting with Cucks Anonymous? I will no longer call Nick a cuck, I guess is what I am getting at. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post a. Uh, How I'm gonna, did we get to this? Is the first. I'm oh, gonna, anyway, Bluey. I'm gonna make my profile picture a picture of a man getting fucked by somebody else and somebody watching. Not the black squares, but we're just doing. We're, we're standing with cucks, ladies and gentlemen. We're standing with cucks. Sneeko, good job. We're proud of you. This really fucking spiraled. Anyway, Bluey. What about it? Um, the parents and Bluey engage in cuckery. Mm-hmm. Because someone noticed in a scene, I see you want to talk. Just say it or okay. don't. Don't give me a fuck me you lips. Why are they fucking? <laughs> Why the are they par- fucking in the children's the show? The parents and Bluey were caught having. There was a scene where like two characters are in the bedroom, and there's a chair facing the be- the bed, a cuck chair. There's a chair facing the bed, and people on Twitter, which I will never call X, were saying, "Oh, that's a cuck chair," like jokingly. And then the lead animator of Bluey got fired because it was a cuck chair. He got fired because, assumedly, people found out and he said something along the lines. This is all legend. This is what I believe he said. Assumedly, he went, oh, I didn't think they'd notice. But yeah, it is. Because he admitted that it was and that people wouldn't notice. And so they fired his ass because, canonically... He made it. That he made they the cuck. parents of Bluey cucks. Yeah. And this is why you're on their side now because you're big Bluey parent guy. Yeah. Anything Bluey teaches me, I agree with. Oh, yeah, yeah of yeah. course. I've, I've seen all the episodes. Why was it? Okay. Why wasn't he just like, uh, it's a chair. Why are we being weird about this? I think that's why. Because he could have said that. Always lie. He could have said that and not get fired. I think people brought it up to him. They're like, people think this is a cuck chair. And he was like, oh my God, I didn't think they'd notice. What? Yeah. I would have been like, what's a cuck chair? <laughs> I think he thought they'd find it funny. Yeah. <laughs> like the other crew members. And they're like, what, Bill? Yeah, like fucking people are yelling at us on yeah. Twitter. Cu- Bluey's weird though. Because Bluey's like actually watched by adults even though yeah. it's meant for children. People love um, it. It's like My Little Pony. Well, I guess. But like it's at the same time, it's like, oh, it's like there's like built in adult jokes into SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. for the adults who were watching it with their kids. So like, I'd like to think that there was like some adult out there who like chuckled at the idea that there was a cuck chair in the yeah. Bluey's like parents' room. Yeah. Wild. I know. Do you want to hear my news? No. And that's the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a uh, commit Sabuku, all right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so Call of the Night got a second season. Uh, I don't know Have that you, is. you haven't seen season one of Call of the Night. No. But it was the Funimation thing or something like that. It that's was- your news? I thought your news was going to be Naruto related. Uh, well, that's that's my best boy. We're getting there. Okay, go uh, on. The Fuji TV Anime Lineup Press Conference 2024 event on Monday revealed that the television anime of Kodayama's Call of the Night, also known as Yufukashi no Uta, manga will get a second season. And there was a tre- uh, teaser trailer and a visual that came out. Uh, and I am fucking stoked. And now you all have to, this is your, this is your yearly reminder to rebuy high dive for, uh, oh, I, like, like, for like two months. Gross. For like, this is why you haven't seen call of the night night because it's only on high dive, which is fucking awful. But call of the night is incredible. And the opening is done by creepy nuts. Who is the person I, who did yeah. the bring bum, bum, bring bum, bum, bring bum, bum, bum. And for anyone so who good. doesn't know what bring bum, bum means. Hey, listen, you- if you're watching this podcast, you know, the Jersey beat mashal opening that took over TikTok for two goddamn months. Call of the Night looks sick, like art Call of the Night wise. is sick. It's a story about a boy who falls in love with a vampire, and right. the vampire is very scantily clad, and she's very sexy, and then he becomes a vampire later on, and then the show is no longer about romance. The vampire is like straight up just Toga, right? Sort of, yeah. Like 100% the character design is just Toga. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, like well, somehow more scantily clad than Toga, but yeah. Yeah. Unless Toga's like mid switching skin, in which case she's just naked. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So huge. Huge if you like yeah. Call of the Night because huge that's- Huge if you, for all those high dive fans out there. Speaking of speaking of high dive and anime and things happening right now, it's a terrible segue, but are we not going to talk about the anime awards? It's like pretty much what we expected, right? What, what were some shakeups? We also aren't talking about the Oscars. Who gives a fucking shit about the Oscar? Oh, a bunch of billionaires flew their I'm, private jets to glaze each other over who cried the best on screen. I'm trying to get the algorithm to pick us up. I'm talking about the Oscars. I'm talking about R. Kelly. I'm talking about everything big right now. Oh, right, listen, make R. Kelly the host of the Oscars. Let's see if we fucking, listen, we had Joe Coy fucking yeah. joking about titties and Barbie and whatever the fucking other one was. Yeah, careful of the splash zone. With R. Yeah, R. Kelly. yeah, you do not want to sit in the first three rows when R. Yeah. Kelly is hosting. Uh, I actually don't know what won everything for the anime awards. I think, I mean, obviously, anime of the year. Vinland was, Saga won nothing. Vinland Saga won nothing, which is crazy. Yeah. Mappa took up what? Like 19 out of the 33 awards or something like that? 
Which checks out. They were like 19 out of 33 anime of the year. Yeah, so here, I'm going to pull up the full winners list here. Um, so yeah, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, blah, 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 blah. So anime of the year, Jujutsu Kaisen. So what's weird is anime of the year was Jujutsu Kaisen Hidden Inventory slash Premature Death. Mm -hmm. So the first six or seven episodes, not right. the second part. Which means that there's a possibility that the second part of the right. second season might be up for contention Weird. next year. That one? Because, yeah, so it's the anime of the year, hidden inventory slash premature death. Wow, imagine losing to like six episodes. Se like literally yeah. seven episodes. But I mean, like, arguably some of the most like well-directed and gorgeous episodes yeah, of anime great. I've ever seen in my entire life. For sure. But that might mean the Shibuya incident goes up next year. Yeah. Which is crazy. Against the, nothing. Against. <laughs> seemingly. Demon Slayer. I think we're getting we're getting uh, MHA's last ish oh. season towards the end of the year. We're also getting to Dawn to Dawn this year, uh, and oh, Kaiji number eight. Oh yeah. Also, did you see the trailer for Loser Rangers? No, you didn't see the trailer for Loser Rangers. They've had one. They had one before. Ranger Rejects. A new one. Ranger Rejects. New trailer. Yeah, yeah they dropped a new trailer. Oh, crazy! You I should didn't watch see it. it. You should watch it right now. I also Kaiju number eight looks so fucking sick. It's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, it looks awesome. Watch the trailer. We're gonna take a pause. Okay. Watch the trailer for Ranger Rejects right now. I'll talk to chat. All right, mm -hmm. did, you, did you finish it? Mm -hmm. How fucking cool does that look? Looks pretty cool. What do you mean pretty cool? Looks pretty cool. It's no Kaiju number eight. What? It's okay. I mean, I that, like, okay. I love the concept. The concept is the most exciting. It's part. the boys meets Power Rangers. Yeah, which is awesome. Awesome. It's really, really cool. So that's exciting. It's I am also excited like about Super it. Crooks. It's like, yeah. like Super Crooks is the whole thing. It's like the, the, like, anime good guys are actually the villains, and then the villains have to, like, kill all the heroes yeah. because they're, like, awful people. It's a subversion on Power Rangers. On Power Rangers. Yeah. And I feel like there's no good Power Rangers media yeah. in the world right now. Like, obviously, there's, like, Futo P.I., which is, like, a Super Satan kind of thing, uh, which is based off um, Common Rider. Gotcha. Uh, but, which was, like, the OG OG. But there's, like, really only that. And, like, having Power Ranger-type media come back into, like, the fold makes me so happy because yeah. I fucking love Power Rangers, man. Yeah. And I love a subversion and the villains being the good guys so goddamn much. So I'm so, that's like what I'm most excited for this year. I would say it's like Ranger Rejects, Kaiji number eight, Da Don Da Don, and then probably MHA. MHA is wow. skittering out. Yeah, yeah. MHA needed to be over like four years ago, I think. MHA like lost all of its hype like out of nowhere. Yeah. And I wonder if it's just like the hype just gets usurped. Well, also season five, nobody so much, liked. There's so much good shit happening yeah, exactly. everywhere else. Yeah. And then like, it's unfortunate that JJK came out basically at the time of the class one, a versus one B thing, which was pretty good, but like seasons five and six weren't great. Yeah. And like, while that was happening, demon slayer was hitting its fucking stride. Yeah. JJK was hitting its stride. And it's like MHA's manga is pretty good right now. It's actually probably only like five chapters away from being over. Like it's like MHA's manga is almost done. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy to think about because it's been around for like 13 years. Uh, but it's like kind of hitting this weird slowdown phase while there's other things like breaking the like the ceiling, yeah. like shooting out the sky. Right. And so it's like kind of fallen to like fifth or sixth and even my rotation. Like I'm more excited to read Chainsaw Man nowadays than I am deemed like uh, the MHA. Yeah. I think you get like one miss yeah. before you're fucked. Mm -hmm. Like, cause even Demon Slayer was on top of the world and then season three comes out and nobody gives a shit anymore. Mm -hmm. Like the new season's coming out. No one's excited. Yeah. Nobody cares because like, they got one miss, and now it's like, oh, Demon Slayer's mid. Mm. JJK is peak anime. Also, I feel like JJK is kind of fucking everything for everybody because it's ostensibly perfect. Yeah. Like, it's like there's there's very few, there's like almost nothing for me, at least, that I can look at JJK and pick apart. It's like Hunter x Hunter for me, where I'm like, I, there's nothing I dislike about this. Yeah. And like, I, that's because I enjoy being over explained to. I enjoy fucking thought bubbles explaining eight different ways a, a technique can work. And if it's on Sunday and rainy and all this kind of right. bullshit. Um, and so JJK, I absolutely adore. So like it running, it's kind of like trying to release an anime while the big three was out and you're like, okay, the big three as it currently stands is probably chainsaw man, uh, JJK and what? Um, Chainsaw Man if you had to choose a big three like the biggest three at least guess, in America right I now I guess Demon Slayer is still, still up there three, it's yeah. just like yeah it's just at the bottom but of MHA the is now I mean, it was probably Attack on Titan until Attack on Titan ended yeah, and now like sure. MHA kind of like steps into that role now that Attack on Titan's gone 
Um, or no, not MHA. No, Demon Slayer Demon steps Slayer. into that role, and, which leaves MHA kind of in like the um, blue hair fucking. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, what is it? God damn it. When we did the movie ranked things, it was just all of those movies. Gintama. Gintama. Yeah. It puts it in the Gintama spot where it's like, you had the unfortunate like reality of running alongside the three most popular anime of yeah. all time, but you're still incredible. I know, there really isn't like, and it, like, Solo, this whole year, mm -hmm. I don't see any of these, like, Solo Leveling's pretty good, um, but it's no, like, JJK or Chainsaw no. Man. Uh, or Demon Slayer. I put it in the same like categorization as Blue Lock because Blue yeah. Lock also kind of came out like at its like on its own. Like there yeah. was like nothing it was else running against, and I was like, this is good enough to carry a season, yeah. but it's not good enough to run along with the big hitters. Uh, but I don't know if this year has any but Demon Slayer, and hopefully Demon Slayer like is a good arc, but it's the training it's one, the so training it's not. Arc. It's not great. No. So it's like it's tough. I really don't think like Kaiju number eight. I don't know. I don't know if I see that being the next like Chainsaw Man in terms of like it's really scale good. and hype. It's really good. If it's really good, then it yeah. is. Um, I don't see that being Loser Ranger either. I want Ranger Rejects to fucking pop up. If, maybe Dondadon, because I know people like the manga. Dondadon is enough. also, I'd say Dondadon is better than Kaiju number eight, yeah. but I don't think it's going to be as well publicly received because it's weirder than we're, Kaiju number eight. No, but I disagree because I think, I think we're in an era where mm. an anime needs to be weird to become the next, like, contender of a big three. Like, my hero's the safest one. Demon is, is JJK weird? What is do it? you mean? It's oh, so weird. It's basically Bleach. It's so weird and borderline incomprehensible. Okay, but it's basically Bleach. I know it is a Bleach ripoff, but, like... But it's so weird. I know it's weird. Uh, well, yeah. But how, but how but is it, it also, But it also looks different. Mm -hmm. Like... All of these, I don't think an anime can look like every other anime anymore. Because Chainsaw Man and JJK both have their own style. Have their yeah. own style. Demon Slayer looks unlike any other anime, Orcus. except Fate, technically. Yeah. Um, and then what like Attack on Titan looked unique. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think it like Bleach came out and like no one really gave a shit. Yeah. Like and it used to be huge. Like people should have cared more, mm -hmm. but they didn't. That came out. Um, I'm trying to think of like what other things kind of came like, uh, hell's paradise. No one gave a because shit. Because it, it, it was like muted palettes. It's a story you've heard before. It's like, Oh, you're on an Island. You're trying to figure out yeah. all of the bosses kind of look the same. Like all of the final bad guys, like the flower people, it all like, have, like looks two like your standard adult swim anime. Yeah. And I feel like anime need to come out looking weird as hell. Yeah. For people to like, that's kind of my hang it. up with Ninja Kamui, and I'm like, I like, I love that the fights are really cool, but yeah. I'm like, oh, this is just, yeah, it's just the, it's, it's the story, you know, exactly. it's the story we've heard a thousand times before. Yeah, and I don't see solo leveling like, I don't know, I don't see us talking about solo leveling like JJK and others. Well, if, it's, if solo leveling continues to be adapted at this speed, it won't be done. It's gonna be like at least a hundred episodes. Yeah. So it's like, we got a while until, like, right. soul, soul leveling is going to be continued. True, but it's Chainsaw, get Man, two. Chainsaw Man was gigantic with eight episodes. Here. You know? Here? Chainsaw Man. Yeah, it was gigantic here. It wasn't gigantic in Japan. Oh, but I, like, I'm, I'm never talking about Japan. I guess. You know but what like, I mean? The thing is with soul leveling, it's gigantic in Korea, Japan, and here. Right, right. So right. it's like, because it got released in this time span where there's not a lot else going on, and it's a manhwa being adapted in Japanese and English, it's big and big like big right. places. Right, right. So it's going to be, it's going to get its entire run. Oh, for And sure. I think once it gets its entire run and it's like, you know, able to do like, it's all hundred episodes, we're going to talk about it a lot differently than at nine episodes. Yeah. I just mean in terms of like, if I go to a box lunch store, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll ever see any solo leveling merch. You'll see some, but not nearly as much as, you know, MHA, like Demon JK, Slayer yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Exactly. That's what I mean. Like, I wonder what That's the fair. next, that is the next huge, American one is, and I don't know if this year has one. I, I Kaiju number eight, maybe. Yeah, maybe. That, it's got the best chance. Yeah, Mashal is also kind of doing a thing where like people are like Freyren was really really big, and post mostly because like the second half of Freyren, like the last six episodes were like crazy. Yeah, that's um, what I hear. They were like nuts. Like yeah. it's like fate level laser attacks and all wow. that. Um, really cool stuff. And so Freyren was really popular, but like it's it's kind of run its course, you know. Yeah. And so like the long lasting story that's gonna like stick around. I thought that um, Undead Unlock had a chance. It's yeah. not gonna be that. 
Um, I know, I did too. Yeah, that sucks. I think it's it's gonna end up being probably kaiju, if anything. Yeah. But also, soul leveling is like the hottest thing in the streets right now. So like yeah, maybe yeah. we're maybe we're being like too fucking dull, like close minded. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like thick headed about it. I guess so. So do you have that? Oh, go on. I was gonna say I was gonna go over the awards here. Oh yeah, I forgot. So JJK swept fucking everything. Yeah. Um. So anime of the year was JJK. Best mm. action JJK. Best animation. What would you guess? It was Demon Slayer. Right? It was Demon Slayer. Yeah, yeah. that's something it looked good it, it did looked not good, look good but it's the worst season of animation for demon slayer, demon slayer yeah I, and like but i guess it's just hidden inventory mm-hmm. that we're comparing it to but even that i thought was better than jj I, I mean it's like it wasn't like vinland saga was gonna beat it, it wasn't like no. aot like aot wasn't gonna beat it no, you know sure. so actually well i know it was the first episode not the second episode of the yeah. that broke uh, up finals i hate these awards i know right uh best anime song was idol Cool. The Ocean of Co. Ocean one, o, which yeah. is fucking gas. I'm totally fine with that. Best art direction. JJK? Demon Slayer. Like, whatever. Yeah. Isn't that I weird? guess. I know. It, like, Demon Slayer looked very good. But it wasn't, but like, artistically n- driven. It didn't, like, blow me away. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the whole, like, the entirety of, like, I feel like the aquarium scene in JJK alone gets you best artistic direction. Yeah. Like, it's like there was so much, like, like the musical score, like the scenes yeah. that they chose, the use of negative space, the, the use uh, of silence. The like VHS filter over yeah. the flashbacks, the the bun bleeding. Yeah, like, like it was like, it was like things bun. made it like genuinely unsettling. So Arctic direction going to there is crazy. Uh, best character design. Um, also, was, we have to remember this is a popularity contest. It's for not sure. like judges. Well, best cinematography did go to JJK. Good. So good. that's, that's cool. Uh, best comedy, Spy X Family. Right, right. right. Uh, best continuing series. One Piece. Wow. Yeah. You might as well just like literally don't even vote on that one. I know. Yeah. Don't don't vote on it anymore. It's literally always going to be One Piece, dude. Uh, when One Piece ends, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to feel the same sensation as when Akira Toriyama died. Probably. <laughs> like One Piece not being around anymore is going to be such a weird fucking yeah era. It's I mean it's been around for almost twice. It's gonna, it's probably going to be around for almost thirty years yeah. by the time it's over. Everyone's going to be like, so what, Oda? What's next? And he's going to be like, I'm going to die. Rest. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah like, like, I genuinely, if he just like crumples into <laughs> dust after he say, writes the last page, I would not be surprised. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, so Oda, what's next for you? And a gust of wind comes yeah, and just, sand and just like, yeah. like his entire purpose on Earth was to write this one goddamn story and that's it. Yeah. I can't imagine being Eshiro Oda and just like putting down the pencil one day and just being like <laughs> and then just like you're just like do I go fish what the fuck do yeah. I do it's gonna be like news reports like Ichiro Oda uh, the final the final chapter of One Piece found under the corpse of Ichiro Oda yeah, like, like, that's it right like yeah. the second he like he's like and the One Piece was the friends we made along the way period heart stops yeah absolutely uh, best director JJK uh, best drama Attack on Titan um, there's not that many dramas in anime that aren't because that's not a drama it's Attack an action it's, a, it's action adventure I'd say I mean it's definitely not like dramatic I would because a lot of people were upset about uh, the wedding one or the husband one or fucking what is it called um, my husband or something something about something, a wedding and a husband yeah. they wanted like that to win like drama and like you know there's best romance of, there's just not a lot of like death note or like uh, monster Mm-hmm. anime yearly yeah at least not that get recognized like because those are dramas absolutely yeah attack on titan is definitely like just like a mech anime yeah, with it's a mech anime. yeah. yeah. so that being called drama is kind of crazy like there is like a little bit of politics but that's it best new series best new series what did we really like You'll was that 100 chainsaw man let's go yeah, i forgot go. about that there you go let's um, go yeah best original anime we talked about it a lot it made Zom- me cry Made you cry. Original anime. I don't know what the fuck original no anime manga. is anymore. Um, um, Bochi? Bochi the Rock? Yeah. I don't think Bochi the Rock. I, I think Bochi Made Bochy you the... cry. I like know it. I remember we talking talked about, about it. We talked about it a lot. There was like, we we covered every single episode. We were like the only people who were talking about it. Buddy Daddies. Fuck you. Yeah. Right. Fucking incredible yeah. though. So very, Good very for, happy. Wow. I can't believe that was this year. That, I mean, it was last year technically, but yeah. Um, best voice actor performance uh, was Senku. Oh, for Arabic. My bad. Never mind. Uh, and then best slice of life was Bochy the Rock. Nice. Yeah. So that was our wrap up on the anime awards. I have a best boy. You want to talk best boys? Yeah. My best boy, the Naruto live action. Why is because that? Because I may possibly be involved. That's insane that that worked. I actually owe you such an apology. 
You know what's wild? Why? It didn't actually. Re- it didn't really work. Oh. Uh, you know what did work? What? Nepotism. Uh, going to carrot Your parties. Mommy? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's in my mommy email. Wow, uh, carrot finally pulled through. Sort of, kind of. I'm not sure yet. I'm not going to apologize then until so, you finish. This okay, can segment. I? Yeah, let me let me get there. All right. <laughs> so you want to talk? Shush, shush your goddamn lips. Um, so I have a call with Ian Boggs today, uh, who is trying to be the Naruto live action actor. Oh. Um, he's a YouTuber. He does uh, like VFX stuff. Uh, very popular. Um, and so, trying to play Naruto. He's trying to play Naruto. He's Japanese. Um, he's very, very famous. Um, and so I met him through care parties, through Steven, through everybody. So all of the friends that I've made in content, um, I are now, I'm now grabbing onto their coattails as hard as I can and saying, oh, please, please, Mr. 30 million subs on YouTube, man, help me be the Naruto guy. And because they know I'm the Naruto guy, they might actually help. So Steven, me and Ian are trying to get involved in the Naruto live action, um, because we're all big Naruto fans and they have way more clout than I do, but I'm the fucking Naruto guy. So I have a call with Ian at four to talk about the Naruto live action. That's hype. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Can I weigh in? Yeah. I don't think he's going to be Naruto. I, you don't think he's going to be Naruto? He's so old. He's old. They're going to cast like a 12-year-old. You think so? Yeah. I he could be Kakashi. He, he's 25. I, as long as he's in. Yeah, he exactly. he gets his fucking foot in the That's door. That's all that matters for you. Yeah. I think it's funny he's auditioning for 12-year-old Naruto. He wants to be Naruto. Yeah. yeah. He can be. You know, well, good on him. I got invited to a premiere last night for a movie called Snake, Snake Shack. Snakes and a Burger. Snake, <laughs> snakes and a Burger. I got invited to a movie last night for uh, a premiere called <laughs> uh, Snack Shack. Yeah. And the movie was about two 14 year olds who run a snack shack for the summer and make a bunch of money off right. it. The actors were 23. So, you know. You never know. As long as you look like a child. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it could go both ways because the One Piece cast uh-huh. are all older. Oh, yeah. But the live action Avatar cast, which we didn't talk about at all, actually. I didn't, um, I didn't watch it. Are everyone, everyone was like, oh, it's bad. Yeah. Was, we'll talk about it next well, week. Well, everyone was like, oh, listen, if it was like Madam Web bad, I would have watched it. But everyone was like, oh, it's, it's what? fine. Watch the first episode. We'll talk about it next week. I don't, we should talk about it. I don't want to. I'm gonna next I, week. I don't. Have you seen it? I saw the whole thing. Oh. Spoiler. 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 Momo dies. <laughs> Momo fucking dies? <laughs> Momo dies. What? You gonna watch it now? In the first episode? No. Last episode. The, they fucking kill Momo? Yeah, Momo. Why? Because it's funny. That's so <laughs> fucked. He's so I funny. Mean, I'm not gonna say he's integral to the story, no. but like. <laughs> anyway, um. That's wild. This dude, Ian Boggs, mm-hmm. totally. I'm sure he auditioned for Zoro. Would have been a sick Zoro. He looks just like Zoro. Oh, for One Piece. Yeah, for One Piece. I guess. But oh, but I was like... gonna say, but the live action Avatar. But also the casting for Zoro was fucking perfect. Yeah, he was great. Mike and he was awesome. Um, but they cast age accurate for avatar but they didn't for one, one piece. piece so who knows what we're doing i think they're gonna go kids especially so? because well, well, here's the thing. one piece was better than avatar the last Airbender. but here's the other thing that is not the fault of like the, the concept of children i guess i thought the acting was bad but the original the acting was bad the original show avatar is all played by kids no yes okay they Michaela were kids was at a the child time. Dante so Bosco was Aang. wasn't. No, he wasn't. Yes. Dante Bosco was a child. Dante was older. But he was playing Zuko. But like Sokka, Aang, and I'm pretty sure Katara were all kids. Really? I know Aang was. And Toph was. Interesting. Yeah. They just didn't get kids or a good director. I don't want to say they got kids who act bad. I, but like kids, the kids but, were not good actors. Yeah, but it's like, also like Stranger Things. Great Cast of well-acting kids. I Game guess. of Thrones. Those kids acted really well. I kids guess. can act well. I think it's annoying and bullshit when people are like, oh, they're kids. They can't act. Kids can act. Kids can definitely act. Yeah, there's movies and shit with good acting kids. Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. He's, he, I, I, I mean, destroyed his life. Yeah. But, you know, he's... Looper. Looper? Looper. As in, like, the... The time travel thing with Bruce Willis. Yeah, what, what child is in Looper? Like, the main kid. Young Bruce Willis or whatever. What? Yeah. Young Bruce Willis There's is There's a the... kid with psychic powers. God, am I not remembering fucking Looper? Yeah. Lo- the one where they have shotguns and yes. they kill people? Yeah. There's a kid with psychic... Psych- kid. He's like the main plot What's device. the other one who was in 500 Days of Summer? Joseph Gordon-Levy. He's also in it. 
I thought he was young Bruce Willis. He is young Bruce Willis. I think I was wrong. I don't think the kid is. Yeah, I don't think. But the kid's in it. He's a main part of the story. I don't fucking remember anything. Anyway, I don't think Naruto's going to be 25. I think he's going to be 12. Maybe. And and I think what I was going to say is part of it is the issue we foresee with One Piece where it's like. Emily Rudd's going to be like 50 by the time they get to like anywhere. Yeah, Alabasta. Like you can, like a 20 year old can pull off 15. I -hmm. agree. A 30 year old cannot pull, pull off, off 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so it's like, I think they want to cast young. Fuck yeah. Nami is 16 until pre uh, to, time skip. She's 19. I think you want to cast young because they want this shit to last like years and years and years. Yeah. Everyone wants their Marvel right now. Well, Naruto's a movie. So it's not the, the Naruto live action, which I guess could have been my news as well. There was a Naruto yeah. live action announced uh, by Lionsgate yeah. and it's just the movie. But regardless, it's like they, I'm sure want like 10 movies. Mm-hmm. Like if you started, I think so. If you started that everyone wants Marvel, you know, but like, okay, but here's my thing. Like, all right. So are you just going to adapt the first, like you're just going to adapt the tuning exams for sure. No. But the, there's no stakes. I don't, well, that's what I want to ask you actually is what you think they're going to go to pain in the I, first movie. I don't, that's my thing. I like, I don't know why they're choosing a movie. Yeah. That was my, it makes too. no sense to me that they're choosing a movie. Cause I'm like, all right, yeah. all right. What, what part do we hop in? Do we hop yeah. in from the beginning? And it's like, hi, I'm Naruto. We're doing land of waves. And then the tuning exams. And it's like, cool. Yeah. Do you think they the just do Zabuza? Maybe that's, you could do Zabuza. You could do the land of waves in, you could do the land of waves in 30 minutes. Yeah, true. You gotta skip some shit, but you can do the land yeah, waves true. in 30 minutes. Like, you, oh, the core you, fighting Zabaza, the, we built the bridge. When's Orochimaru come? Is that post? Orochimaru is that's so- not po- That's pre-tuning. No, it's post-tuning exams. That's Konoha Crush Arc, which is the arc after the tuning exams. Because oh. they're in the final, like, 1v1s, and uh, Gara gets stabbed by Sasuke Shidori, he gets cut, yeah, he yells yeah. my blood, he activates his big old- Yeah. Orochimaru comes during Shikaku. that? Orochimaru yeah. comes during that. Because he's he dressed gets- up as the Kasekage. Wow, good yeah. arc. Great arc. Yeah, I don't think you get that far. No, I, I, like, and that's the thing. Is that's like, its okay, own movie. Yeah, but then you're ending on the tuning exams. And then you're like, okay, cool. The, what, what did we get? What, what was accomplished? Well, no, I think the second movie, tuning exams, the Gara shit, mm-hmm. Orochimaru, and it ends on that. Like, it's the full tuning so, exam arc. Okay, is, so you want the I'm first thinking. movie to just be the Land of Waves? I think it has and to And the be. prologue? I think that's all it can be. I, but, but then you're like, okay, the Land of Waves arc is, that's basically episodes one to 24. It's yeah. like one to 22 is the Land of Waves arc. You can skip the majority of the prologue. Yeah. It's like, okay, open it like how Naruto opens. Kurama's destroying the village. Naruto's bored. Everybody hates him. You can do the Land of Waves arc in 35, 40 minutes. If you, here's how it works. It actually works. If you beef up Zabuza mm-hmm. and it's like, I think the movie needs to be like, it opens on like Naruto, either like, you know, they're trying to take down the nine tail Fox, like the back, mm-hmm. the backstory, backstory of yeah. that opens on Naruto's backstory. Then cut to present day, Naruto. He's being goofy. Mm-hmm. Then you cut to Zabuza and Haku's backstory way before you meet them. And it's interweaving Zabuza and Haiku uh-huh. and Naruto. And then they meet. And then in the they middle. meet. And then it's the fight. And I think it needs to be that because I really don't think you have time for the tuning exam. For the land of waves and the tuning exams. Yeah. And then and then by the end. That's fair. And you like really beef up like building Naruto's character, building up the world. Cause they have a fucking thousand kids to introduce. Mm-hmm. Because then, and they need to introduce them in the first one, so then in the tuning exams. The Sasuke retrieval arc is where they actually become important. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so it's like, I think you spend the first hour, like, getting to know Naruto, Sasuke, because you also have to do, like, the bells test and stuff. True. So True. There's a That's lot, the prologue. Yeah, there's a lot to do in the prologue. First hour's prologue, second hour's Land of Waves. Okay, but then you've accomplished 24 episodes. That's okay. Of a 700 episode anime. That's like 300 episodes it's, without filler. It's like 40% filler, so it's closer to 40, like 400 episodes. If you go to Lionsgate and you're like, hey, we, we got to do this whole series in two movies. You're going to get laughed at a thing. They want 11 Naruto movies. I, but that's what, I feel like that's how anime adaptations have done it forever. They just smash as much as they can in. Okay, but think about and they're all, right, all bad. But think about it from the perspective of the One Piece uh, right. live action. Yeah. They did basically everything until they hit the grand line, which is episode 63-ish yeah. in eight hours of content. Yeah. So by that logic, two hours 
would is be like about 20 episodes. 20 episodes. Fuck you! Right. Wow, look at that! But then, but then, but you the, just pointed a gun at me and then realized the barrel was, was pointed, pointed at back. You. It was a little Bugs Bunny situation yeah. here. But my thing is, movies have a way higher budget than a TV show. Yeah, and it's way harder to put out like twenty movies than a bunch of seasons of a TV show streaming directly to Netflix. Uh huh. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, are we going to expect people to keep coming out over and over and over again? Are we going to keep this high powered director for all twenty movies? Wait, no, I don't think that's true because. Depending on the show, like Avatar mm-hmm. had a $15 million budget per episode. That's crazy. That's 15 times eight. Audience, you do the 15 math. 15 times eight is, oh God, uh, 30 times 40. four, which is 120 million. Yeah, 120 million? Yeah. That's the price of a movie. I, it's the same price. I guess, kind of, yeah. Yeah, so it's like not more expensive. Now it is, yeah, at least. Yeah, it's like the same price for how much people are putting, Percy Jackson, same thing, 120 million budget. Um, I guess I just, I I, find, I struggle like being like, oh yeah, the Naruto live action is 10 fucking movies. I I think that's what they want. Like anyone buying a franchise Mm -hmm. like that, just the money logistics of it, they want 10 movies. I guess. Every studio wants a Fast and the Furious or a Marvel. That's why every studio, that's why like DC keeps struggling Mm -hmm. to make a universe that people will be excited to come see. That's why I remember when Universal was like, we're making the monster universe. Yeah. We're making Dracula and Frankenstein and all these movies intertwine. Mm-hmm. If you were like Universal is making a 10 movie Frankenstein Dracula series. Yeah. I'd also think that's stupid. At least Naruto has the content. It has the established fan base and everything. Yeah. I and just, the amount of stories. I think I'm just running into the same issue that I run into with the One Piece thing where I'm like, it's going to take too much time. Yeah. Like, I'm like, are you, you did the Harry Potter books. I feel like the Harry Potter books are genuinely the best comparison. Uh-huh. And how many years did the Harry Potter movies take? Probably eight, eight years? Eight to ten? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Did in ten years? I guess if you could get it done, but, like, they were doing, like, a movie a year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was because there was, like, the, all that, was it DreamWorks? Who did them? Uh, Universal. Universal. That was all that Universal was focusing on. They're like, we are pumping out Harry Potter movies. And, like, I just don't see that same speed being attached to the One Piece adaptation. The Naruto. No, but no. So like, I'm using the One Piece adaptation as my like, as like my foundation. And I'm like, sure, we've heard that season two is coming, but we haven't heard anything about season two. If it was at this point with the Harry Potter movies, we'd have a fucking trailer by now or some shit. I really don't think studios care. Like, I don't think they're like, oh, well, we, we got to make less movies because of their age. Like, I think they're going to keep making them. They don't care if the movies are good. They're going to keep making them until they stop making money. I guess. So that's the only time that, like Marvel that's why Marvel exists nobody even likes their movies anymore yeah because they're all fucking bad but the thing exactly. is the reason that the Harry Potter movies work is because in the books they get older every year right exactly. so they were like oh cool the kids will age with the movies we get them young and then they'll yeah. be they'll be old by the time that they're done that's not how Naruto works that's not how One Piece works they're that age for fucking 500 episodes right but okay how many arcs pre Shippuden how many arcs yeah they're like canon arcs yeah so it's Land of, it's prologue Land of Waves uh, tuning exam, Konoha crush, Sasuke retrieval arc, five, four, four, four arcs. Yeah. You get a 12 year old, you do a movie per arc. By the time you get to Shippuden, he is 16. He is Shippuden age. So you're saying they do four movies in four years? Or even if you spread that 12 year old becomes, that's too many. That's a lot of years. Yeah. Eight years. 20 years old. 20 years old. But 20 can play 15. If you're just like. Yeah, but 30 can't play 16 when he's, you know, when it's the war arc and they're trying to like fight Madara for four movies straight. But I mean, you could fudge it. Like, just say they're getting a year older each time. Like, it's not like, it's not like it needs to be. As accurate as possible. Well, it's not like even if like, if there was a year between each of those arcs, Mm -hmm. would anything really change? Like age wise or like. Like plot wise. wise. I guess not really, but it's like it's like the shooting exam plays directly into the Konoha Crush arc because Orochimaru is there dressed up as the Kazikage, and the only reason that the sand well, village right. is you there is- You do that one in one movie. Yeah. Chunin and Konoha Crush, that's one movie. And I guess you could He's say like after, 14. after the Konoha Crush arc, you could be like, oh, Sasuke has been stewing on this for a year before the Sasuke retrieval arc. And there is a couple of months between the Sasuke retrieval arc and also, the Konoha Crush arc. you do the Sasuke retrieval arc and the fight in one movie. What fight? Like Naruto versus Sasuke. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, you could very so easily. So what's the fourth pre Shippuden arc? So Land of Waves. Yeah. Tuning exams. Yeah. Konoha Crush. Oh. Sasuke Retrieval arc. It's three movies because we combine Tuning exams and Konoha Crush. Crush. Yeah. 
Easy combined. You're forgetting how long the tuning exams are. That's the forest of death. Yeah. That's the- Cut that. It's just a fighting Cut tournament now. Cut the forest it's, of death? It's just a fighting tournament now. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think he could do oh, it. Then you're not establishing the fact that Gara is the fastest to ever accomplish the, the, the force of death. Orochimaru bites Sasuke in the force of death. That's where he gets the curse mark. Right. Um, that's, you can do the forest of death in 10 minutes. I, there's I think. no, you could I think you can. Not. It's so much. There's fluff. massive plot repercussions for Sakura, for Mike guy or for um, Rock, Lee, Rock Lee, for Sasuke exploring the curse mark for the first time. Um, Naruto being helped. There's so much happening in the forest of death. You can do it in like 20 minutes. Maybe. How about this? You, before the One Piece show came out, uh -huh. you didn't think you could do all of like any of those arcs in one episode. Like Arlong Park is one hour long. Baratier is like one hour long. No, Baratier was a cup. No, you're forgetting. Was it? They did like, they did like three arcs in eight episodes. Three arcs in eight episodes. They did, they did uh, Usopp's arc in one episode. The right. fucking cat claw guy, they look like, where they were like hiding in the mansion. He was stabbed through the wall. Yeah, yeah. They did that one in like one episode. Yeah. The rest of them, like Syrup Village, like Nami's backstory, Arlong Park, all that, they did in like two, three episodes. But would you think that you could crush three arcs into eight episodes of One Piece? Three arcs? No, probably not. Yeah. And like, I think it's definitely possible. I yeah. think the problem is like, if we went through together and like watched mm -hmm. uh the tuning exams and we're like taking notes of like what is essential mm -hmm. and what needs to be there for entertainment and plot tons of things could be cut very you, yeah you could whittle it down into 20 minutes at most yeah and also if it's the second movie we don't need to really like establish dick like we we can just straight into it yeah it's like the fucking what's it called what's jjk season two called uh, the, it's like the, the it's hidden the inventory or? it becomes a Shibuya, Shibuya incident, incident of gotcha. movies where it's like okay movie one was all fucking set up this and that movie two tournaments terrorism yeah boom you know I guess kind of yeah as long as you can lead into it I think they could do like four movies in yeah. like six years yeah as long as like that way you keep like the crew the relatively the same age yeah. you're like hey make sure the main character just get into drugs or alcohol and like 13 years old yeah. doesn't age himself and then like yeah you can probably pull it off yeah. all right whatever get me in the goddamn room i'm getting on a phone call about it at 4 p.m hopefully ian's got good news for me but who who knows honestly for sure uh do you want to do a love letter uh yeah love letters That's so this is the part of the show where me and danny poll our live audience of incredible viewers to ask us a question that we answer on live and if you guys ever want to be one of those incredible viewers who watches our podcast live you can become a youtube member or a patreon member and watch us live ask us questions that we answer and uh you know just hang out see the things that we cut uh get a couple of extra pieces of content like the fact that me and danny post two extra videos a month which we didn't do last month i'll admit because nick was in china and video gaming in china was very difficult i didn't have enough wi-fi all right i couldn't even open ready or not but this month to make up for it. This is so all of you know this month to make up for it. Me and Danny are going to be doing four hours this month. So we're doubling up this month to make you guys feel as though your purchase to spend more time with us is worth it. So, Danny, Panda Mom asks, what's your favorite Dragon Ball reference in other media? I will always love the ones that I grew up with yeah. more so than like when I see it now. Like Billy and Mandy, like... Do you remember that? Them charging up and they yeah. get the spiky hair. They both get the different colored spiky hair. Yeah, it was always like whittled down to like a spiky hair and a scream. Yeah. Actually, what what's yours? What's yours? So mine is pretty much in the exact same vein. I think it was also a Cartoon Network show. Codename Kids Next Door. Yeah. They did. I think it was, a, I think it actually might've been a Brawly reference, uh, but they like went to the maximum extreme where like one of them literally, their, their hair became so large and so blonde that they couldn't hold it up. Yeah. Uh, and they were battling against what was like supposed to be either like a freezer or a Yeah, cooler. it's a freezer. I was yeah. going to change my answer to that one because yeah. I remembered that they didn't just do a hair and Kamehameha reference. Yeah. They have a Frieza. And it's like a multi-headed Frieza yeah. monster. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's super cool. No, I always look like when you saw those as kids, mm -hmm. were you just like, like, holy shit, they're what? doing a thing I know. I honestly, I didn't grow up. I kind of did grow up in, with Dragon Ball. I like the Budokai Tenshi 1. I yeah. played a lot. 
Um, and so like, I kind of knew Dragon Ball, but I didn't watch it until I was older. So I was like, oh, it's like a thing that I like, I kind of understand, but like, I probably didn't even understand it nearly as well as like, I possibly could have, if I watched Dragon Ball. Oh, I was such a dick about it. I'd like call my dad and be like, dad, I was like, what, what do you think's happening here? Do, yeah. you, do you get what's going on? I'd be like, not really. And be like, yeah, that's right. Go yeah, back like, in the, the kitchen. Get the fuck out of your scrub. <laughs> yeah. You don't even know why he's screaming. All right. Yeah. You don't know how to, you don't know how to charge a, a fucking energy ball. I know that was always Spirit so bomb. exciting. An energy ball. Energy Look ball. at you. I'm I know you said the game's name wrong too, and I was gonna let it slide. Tenkai Budichi. Mm. Buddha Tenkai. You're closer. Tenkai Budichi. You're close. Budichi. Swap them. Budichi Tenkai. Budakai. Budakai. Tenichi. Tenkaiichi. Budakai Tenkaiichi. Yeah, you're like seven. Deleting syllables. It's a fucking silly name. Yeah, right? Yeah, what do you yeah. want from me? It's long. Hard. It's for sure long. But all right. All right, that's all we have for the day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being with us. Me and Danny are still getting our podcasting shoes back on, but we're back, and I'm not going anywhere for at least a month and a half. So that's pretty good. Make sure you follow us on all the other platforms, like TikTok, Instagram, all the short form things. All of our shorts on TikTok are going crazy. Everybody loves Stella. We've already told her she'd come back on the show whenever. Talk about BL. We appreciate you guys sticking with us after the four weeks that I was gone. We hope you loved the interview series. We know we loved doing it, but we're back. We're back to our roots. We know what we're doing. We're in the room. We're here. You guys love us. We're the reason you come watch it. Uh, we're going to surpass the Crunchyroll podcast one day, but we can't do that without you. So please, if you enjoy the podcast, send it to other people, because if we want anything, it's to be bigger than the people who literally own anime. Danny. Yeah. And if you know anyone who listens to the Bluey podcast, uh, tell them to stop. Tell them to stop. Because if that ever surpasses us. I will kill myself. <laughs> like it's like on I'm I'm standing on death's door. <laughs> yeah. It's so it is the worst. It's like, hey, here's your bronze medal. Yeah. By the way, by the we way. killed fourth place. Yeah. Like it's like, by the way, like um when you finished the race, the track crumbled like yeah. it was Batman. Yeah. And you're... everyone else behind you died. <laughs> yeah. Cause I I cannot live with being that close to the Blue Podcast. All right, I'm NC Hammer23, also known as the Weeb Commander. You can find us everywhere. Go buy our merch. Uh, Danny made a bunch of it before we left. Uh, we haven't plugged it in a long time. Yeah. Uh, Daniel. We got a bunch of cool merch. Uh, and read the descriptions of the merch. So I worked really hard on them. They're too much very funny. It. Yes. Um, yeah, and I've been Danny Mata. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube page, Danny Mata. We didn't even talk about, I have so many shows I've been watching. Has Been Hotel, Madoka Magica, Rebellion. Uh, yeah, the movie. You're, be you're beyond me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. We'll talk about that next week. Cool. See cool. you there. Bye. Adios.